is going to be a lot more. So just to tell you who I am a little bit, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Kevin Dunlap. I moved here to the lovely uh, city of Raleigh, North Carolina, basically on March 1st last year. So I'm, I'm about to hit my one year anniversary. For 18 years, I lived in a little town called Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Nevada, not Nevada, by the way. <laughs> so if you go to Nevada, you say Nevada, they're going to correct you. <laughs> so I lived in Las Vegas for 18 years, and pre-COVID, I used to belong to a lot of different media groups. Okay, so one of the, uh, uh, and these are I went to on a monthly basis. I used to go to the SEO meetup, the social media meetup, the WooCommerce meetup, the WordPress meetup, the blogger meetup. The podcast. Those are just the business oriented. And then, of course, we had speed networking. We had a whole bunch of different kinds of meetings. And I realized like two months ago that you guys have some networking things like Rockstar Connect and, yeah. that. Um, and some other ways that people meet on a regular basis in a bar, kind of noisy. And you try to, you know, find somebody that you are business compatible with. But there, are, there were no education based meetups that were on business. So this is why I created this this meetup. This is why this is our uh, inaugural um, course, our inaugural thing. And that's why uh, for today I wanted to start with something that was fairly somewhat straightforward that most people could benefit from, which is an introduction to SEO. Uh, okay, so who in here knows what SEO is? Okay, so y'all you know that it stands for search engine optimization. So who in here has their own personal web, or their own business website that they can per personally manage? Because some people like say realtors or whatever, they may have websites, but it's going to be hosted and, and, and everything's going to be controlled by their broker. You know, so a lot of people may have websites, but they may not have access to the website. No, I do. Yes, I mean I, I, I do too. And um, I don't know why I lost the internet here. I lost the connection. My laptop is in sleep mode. Uh, maybe that's why. Is it? Oh. Do it. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Casey. Casey and Frank. Nice to meet you, Frank. Nice to meet you. Sabrina? Nice to meet you both. What did you guys find out about the course? Well, I'm a member of uh, meetup.org. Oh, yeah. And it was suggested to. Okay. I met Kevin at a, a coffee shop meetup. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a month ago? Did Carly organize? I don't know who Yeah, no, uh, Carly organized that one. So she, and Carly was actually beginning her own real estate uh, uh, meetup for uh, for investors. Gotcha. Where you both in? Uh, I'm I'm retired and I'm working on I'm working on an app that I okay. market. Very cool. Oh wow, cool. Um, I work in real estate. Um, that's my side okay. hustle, and then I, I work at, for an educational company in Perry for my Okay. Yeah. Very cool. How about you? I work for a marketing firm. So. That's right. That's right. Good. Yeah. Conflict so, of interest. Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost. It's like you can hand my card to everyone who doesn't want to do the SEO. Um, so basically, we find businesses, small usually, um, that are looking for services like social media management, SEO, website design, uh, digital advertisements, billboards. We have an ad truck, a digital ad truck. Um, These are like copywriting, like anything. Really. So you actually be like a mobile, a mobile billboard? So it's basically just a giant truck, but instead of like the truck carrying things, so it's just TVs on the sides. Yeah, I've seen trucks. we have those all over. Oh, yeah. They're, they're called uh, mobile uh, billboards. Yeah, exactly. It's a mobile billboard. Yeah. They get your attention. Yeah, a little bit more than a normal billboard, yeah, but standing absolutely. still, right? right. Yeah. yeah, bring the uh, billboard to them. I haven't seen yeah. it in a long time. I actually just reached out to Upwork for about three of those. Perfect. Well, I'll give you my business card. <laughs> yeah, and do all of it. Now, now, this is not necessarily a, a place where you know we're doing networking. Of course, if you guys want to network, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but that, that's the purpose of this is more educational. Because that's the reason I want to distinguish myself from Rockstar Connect or things like that. But more than happy to share ideas uh, with, uh, with each other. So, uh, so you say you don't have access to your website because you're, you're working for your client. I personally don't. I can reach out right now and get access, but okay. right now I don't have to log in for it. Okay. And and what what's your uh, website? Uh, right? www.secondbraintech.com. Do you want to come? Sure. And yeah, you can pull up my site too if you need to. My son built me one. Uh, I think we 
lost the Dr. Work, you said? Oh. We lost the cool name for it. Is that it? Or domain name? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. There. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but I, yeah, I will say that that uh nope. what? I've never had that come up. What kind of app are you creating? It's personal effectiveness, uh, time organization, that okay. kind of thing. Okay, well, so we're gonna work on your websites. <laughs> Is this it? Yeah, that's okay. And uh, yours, Casey? GoMediaNC.com. By the way, I will say that just I because didn't... I want to stay under the radar, that my website does not talk about a solution, it just talks about the problem that we solve. I can get back to I know your email says welcome PNC well, instead yeah. of saying your name. Properties in North Carolina, yeah. Uh -huh. so, so I live right next to PNC Bank. Like I was wondering if I had even been PNC Bank. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> okay. So um, essentially what I wanted to do is when, when we're talking about SEO, it stands for search engine optimization, which essentially is like how is somebody going to find you on the internet? That's the whole purpose of SEO. Now, my suggestion, if you can have your own uh, website um, that you have control over, then that's going to be ideal because that's when you can go and actually change things. Uh, so you have having direct access. Now, let me ask you this, there, Robert, right? Right. Right. Uh, so, Frank, is yours a WordPress website? Is it a um, oh, it's Wix? A, um, it's, it's, it's Wix. I did it years ago. Okay. And, and it's pretty, it's pretty primitive. I just wanted to put something out there, just for, if people wanted to see my website. So somewhere. right now, because I, I did hit that, um, that suspicious. I've never seen that. That's the fun because if you go to your website on your computer, it's saved as a cookie on your website, and therefore it's not going to recognize it. Yeah. If you go to it in incognito mode, then that may actually start showing you some, huh. you know, you know with, with, with issues. And if you're in Chrome. Going out incognito mode, you just hit these three bars, these three dots, and there you go right there. So that, that, I'm, I'm sorry, what are you saying? If you want to look at your site as if somebody else is looking at you, don't have your cookies. What browser is this? This is Chrome. Okay. Everything I'm going to show you today is Firefox. Firefox. Does it have something like that? Yes, it does. Okay. I'm sure it does, yeah. It does. Most browsers do. Okay, yeah. I'll take a look at that. Now, a lot of the things I'm going to be showing you today is going to be based upon a Chrome uh, thing, a, a Chrome uh, browser, and I'm also going to be showing you some things that are based upon WordPress. So just so just so that you're aware that um, the reason I use WordPress is because if you're using a like say a cell phone and you want to get uh, some extra features on your cell phone, you download things called apps. Yeah, I've, I've looked at that, and I'm familiar with what you're talking about. It looks pretty. It Pretty seems, capable. yeah, it may seem overwhelming at first, but once you start getting used to WordPress site, then you then you got to start having control. Now there are negative things about WordPress. I've I've faced twice what I call what people call the, the white screen of death, which basically means nothing. All you see is the white. You can't log in. You just it is completely gone. It's just all of this is a white screen. Uh, there's ways to fix that, but uh, if you if you're backing up your white website on a regular basis. Then you should not have to worry about those uh, the, the white screen of death, and what that basically means when you have something like that, that just means that you've got a uh, you've got a plugin or say an app that uh, is misbehaving with another plugin. They just don't they, or or your overall layout, which is called your theme, is not interacting with that theme properly. Now, if you're downloading uh, 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 plugins that are on WordPress, uh, plugins that are have a lot of uh, Used to it, to say a lot of you know favorable reviews, like you know some of the bigger ones, they're not going to be the ones that's going to cause your uh, browser to come down. But if you download a plugin that says, "Hey, we've got 17 users," <laughs> you got to be a little careful. <laughs> the, the risk factor uh, does go up. Not saying that it's going to ca cause it, but those are the ones you have to be a lot more cautious on. Just like any app that you download from 
your app store or whatever you guys call it on, um, on, on iPhones. Um, if it has you know, only 20 reviews or something like that, you, you, you may not download that app, no matter how nice it sounds. WordPress is exactly the same. How expensive are the, the apps for WordPress? All the ones that I've used, all the ones I'm going to show you are going to be free. Okay. Now, a lot of them have what they call the standard version. Then they have what's called the pro version. The pro version will give you a lot more features. Okay. That is up to you, uh, depending on what it is that you're trying to do, if you want to uh, make that investment. Now, often when you go pro, sometimes they will be a monthly subscription, and sometimes they will be a one-time fee. So you just, and sometimes that one-time that one-time fee will only last about a year, maybe two years. It all depends on what you know what it is that you're going to do. All the plugins that I'm going to show you today are all going to be free. However, you can go into the, the, the paid version if you want to. So when we're uh, talking about uh, SEO, so before I go into your guys' sites, now can you guys see the video okay? Are, are the lights glaring? Because I, I, to me it's a big glare, but I'm sad about it. It's fine it's to me. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm going to show you uh, my particular website just so you can get a kind of a a layout or the feel of a, of a WordPress looking site, and then we'll go into the nitty gritty of the SEO part of it. Now, I just created this website. Come on now, people. Thank you. I don't know where the motion detector is. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> was it? Is it earlier? Is there a way to turn it off? Uh, no, I know I, 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 there's a light switch, and it's like a little thing to the left of the light switch. Yeah, I, yeah. I rub my head in front of it, so I think it's detecting motion, but there's got to be somewhere else in the center of the room. So you just stretch everything else going on. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this, so I just created this website maybe eight or nine months ago. So I'm still building the SEO for this website. Now, when you're working on your SEO, this is not an overnight one-time do-all. This is a continual uh, effort that you must keep doing on a daily basis. Your site has to show activity. Uh, uh, if I if I say anything wrong, please let me know because he works for an SEO company. <laughs> so your website has to show activity. It also has to have things called links going to the website and things going links going out of the website. And we'll talk talk, uh, talk about that in, uh, in a couple of minutes. So so basically on, on my website, this is the uh, this is the AlphaMorphformsAcademy.org. Everything that I do is through that uh, is through that uh, that domain name. Now. One of the things you definitely want to do, uh, and Frank, this might be something where you're having issues at, is you don't, you may not have a secure certificate yet, and they, uh, uh, an SS, they call it an SSL. Because yeah, that might be why, it's, uh, that's why I'm I have that whole thing. Is, this is a, this is a potentially dangerous website. So, yeah. so you definitely, for you, I would suggest whichever yeah, hosting that. company that you're going through. Hopefully, it's not going out uh, That's your Hostgator. <laughs> I recommend Hostgator. Well, it's actually Easy DNS. It's a Canadian company. I use a company called SiteGround. Uh, I was introduced to them, and they're also running a special right now. Now, I was on an SEO call a few days ago, and there's two other websites out there. I don't have them up here. One of them is called um, uh, Green Geeks, just like it's spelled G-R-E-E-N, G-R-E-E-K-S. Green Greeks? Yeah, uh, green Geeks. Geeks, okay. As in somebody that's weird. No worry. <laughs> And the other one is called A2, it's like the letter and number, A2 Hosting. Okay, so what I found from these, and I've not done any of my own market research on these two companies, I just found out about them two days ago. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to, uh, uh, cause I'm gonna be covering eight topics today, but um, uh, the thing is that with, with those two websites, supposedly they're gonna be a lot more friendly for mobile devices, for your, your Google rankings. Can I ask you to repeat the names, please? Yes, A2, number, the letter A, the number two, Hosting, Dot com and greengeeks.com. Now, I don't think I've been to their websites before, so we can kind of see. Are they similar to the site ground? Like they're comparable? Yes. Like it's just a different? It's just a, a different platform. Now, according to this other uh, company, uh, or this other uh, SEO uh, uh, event I was attending the other day, um, a lot of the other companies, GoDaddy, I'm sure SiteGround is, so uh, HostGator, all of them, are going through a, a basically a, a parent company and, and they're offering the, the, the same kind of thing. Oh. Now, I have no qualms with GoDaddy. I was with, I was with GoDaddy for several years, but then when the, a few years ago, it's like 2015 or so, when uh, Google was saying that, hey, uh, if, we, if you wanna be ranking, we've gotta make sure that you are a secured website. And that became a much higher um, uh, thing for Google that uh, so, so they were requiring so, so the, the SSLs. 
Now, if GoDaddy charges like $150 per year, most other hosting companies, it's free. So that's the reason, I, that's the whole reason, oh, that's the only reason I'm at GoDaddy. Now, I sometimes still buy URLs at GoDaddy, um, but it, it doesn't matter where you buy the URLs, where you host it. Uh, I just put my uh, URL, and it, it does not have the SSL on it. Although, yeah. I see a lot of websites that you don't put SSL in, but then it actually does have that. Um, so I don't know. Yes, yours does not, because right there, you can see, what does it say right there? Right, right there. It's not uh, secure. <laughs> I'm going to be talking to easy DNS in a second. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Oh, I mean, it, that, that to me is extremely important. Because if you sure. don't have that SSL, Absolutely. SEO is going to do nothing for you. Yeah. Just don't be able to click it. <laughs> well, it actually is going to hurt you. Yeah. You can say, hey, come see my website. Come see my website. Fraudulent website. Fraudulent yeah. website. Yeah. That, I mean, you, that is like the number one thing that, uh, that you might maybe uh, take a look at. Um, now, let me so go. So just going through this. Um, so on a normal website, you're going to have these things called, uh, basically they're called blocks or rows. And uh, in the, inside each row is going to have these uh, the contents or columns. And then you're going to have anything from words to images to, uh, you can see these are links because the, the, the little hand's doing this. Uh, so those are all links. Um, and then, so essentially when you're building your website, this is essentially going to be doing that. Um, so when we go inside, the, uh, as you can see, also you're going to have menus across the top, and then you're going to have all your support systems. So all every single page that you have needs to be um, needs to be important as far as your SEO is concerned. Your overall website needs to have activity. For an example, if I was going to go, if Google's sending a crawler or a spider to your website and there's been no activity for four years, this Google's going to say, "Hey, this is a uh, this is an up to date company." Or like I said. And this part of that company is kind of already gone out of business. So one of the first things you need to do is make sure that you are constantly adding new content to your website. This could be done through uh, blogs or blogs, or you could do it through uh, 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 new content. I create new courses all the time. I mean, uh, this up here, the classroom, I just created that two days ago, two, three days ago. That's going to be for, for the, uh, the, re, uh, the membership site for, for this class right here. Yes, sir. Before you, I think you used the term, it needs to show activity, uh, links in and out. So does that, is activity people accessing your page? No. Yes. Okay, it's just- Content. Content, okay, content. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so what happens is, um, and I'm just going with Google, so Google is the, is the most popular uh, browser out there, you know, as far sure. as uh, internet searches. Uh, they're going to, they send out these things called uh, spiders, some people call them crawlers, and they're going to constantly going out to your website and, and going through all of your links. Now you also want to make sure that when you're creating a website, is that you also want to make sure that all of your links work, because most websites, Casey, tell me if I have you can so them. often. <laughs> most websites have bad links, oh, yeah. and that's going to hurt your SEO. <laughs> it's also going to hurt the, the user experience. Mm -hmm. So you always want. That's why I have my next course next week on uh, redirects. Redirects and subdomains are a great way to maintain control of your website without having to worry about, oh, is this link work still working or not? Because if the link changed, but you had a redirect to go into it, your redirect would still be the same. You just go inside the redirect and change the URL. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for an example, I've got my, my three courses, up, my three things I've given away for free today. It's Optimal Forms Academy forward slash RM. That's going to go to my roadmap, or one of my courses It's called Roadmap. If that URL changes, it doesn't matter. I just change where it works as in the RM. For the strategy session, the one below that, uh, right now it's going through my program. You know, I'm, uh, my CRM and email campaigns are through a company called Keep. Now I used to be on Calendly. Now when I switched from Calendly to Keep, instead of having to go and change all of those programs, all I had to do is go to this forward slash strategy and change that one. That one I just changed it's, instead of going to this URL. Now it's going to that URL. I don't have to go and change 15 different links to my website because I I made one little change. So that's the power of the redirect. So I'll talk about that next week. So that, that is why the, those are so important. Now, um, so I want to go inside uh, the WordPress. Now, no, most of you have probably never seen a WordPress uh, uh, dashboard, or if you have, it's probably been a, a while ago. So to, to go to uh, a WordPress password or dashboard, 
Uh, if you were just setting, setting this up for the very first time, you do this at your host, you know, GoDaddy, you know, whichever place that you have your hosting at, and you just basically link that to your website, and now you can actually log in. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, there's my, um, oh, yeah, there it is. There. So I'm going to be going in to uh, optimalforcecounting.org forward slash WP for WordPress dash admin. That's me logging into my account. So this is what I'm going to see. And then I'm going to go ahead and log in. It may, it may automatically log me in. If it doesn't, I'll just hit the login button. Now, when you first create um, a WordPress website, this is not what you're going to see. I have a lot of different plugins that, that you can see here all on the left hand side. When you first just getting started, um, put my glasses on so I can see better. Um, you, you will see the, uh, the dashboard, which is highlighted right there. You will see this thing called posts. Posts are your blogs yeah, that you're writing. Then you also see media, that's where you upload your images. I would suggest not uploading video, just link your videos in, because that's going to call your page to slow up for your blog slower and uploading. And then you have your pages. Pages are your different web pages on your website. Uh, below that are going to be your comments, and then you may have one or two other links here. Now, you have you also have plugins down here on the lower left-hand side. Two other ones that you will definitely see a lot of is going to be appearance, and then you also see uh, uh, settings. Okay, those are all the ones that you're going to, those are the main ones that you're going to be uh, seeing. I'm going to go into one that's going to call, uh, called plugins. Now, these are going to be, if you're getting a WordPress website, I'm going to give you the name of quite a few different plugins that I, I would highly recommend that you, that you download. Now, if, you, if you're building a website before, like using Wix, you're used to getting a little thing and you drag it and drop it. So it's called a like drag and drop website. Um, By the way, I had to wrestle with Wix to get it to do what I wanted. That's why I don't use Wix. Do you guys use your own product? I mean, look at this crap. But anyway, I, I digress. Well, no, I don't have any energy on it. Well, the thing is uh, with Wix and most other website builders, regarding this Wix or Squarespace or you know, whatever these other uh, well, the ones are, um, is that they're all basically the same thing. You're, going to, you, you're creating a row, and then you're putting in what you want to put in that row. Yeah, it's going to be an image, it's going to be a tag. So when you're creating a web, your website, even if you're not doing it yourself, you still need to kind of design it on paper. Yeah. You still need your web developer, because your web developer, if, you, you know, if you're doing an app, like, I don't know anything about apps. So I mean, I need to know what you want me to put on the website. I can't just go and invent something out of the blue wall. I guess you can't even please chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Kevin, can I ask you a plus, quick question? Sure. What do major corporations use to create their websites? WordPress. What's the more WordPress? Really? WordPress is probably the most common. If they're crazy, they'll use Adobe Dreamweaver to create it internally, <laughs> the coding, but I don't know. Okay. a lot less common now. Well, because um, one of the things that you can do, I just kind of, this is a, a little bit of, on a side note, let me go to Google. WordPress is probably the most popular. Though. What WordPress well, theme is that? Know, yeah. If they can do it, then I can, you know, <laughs> kind of proof of principle. So I'm going to go to what uh, what, uh, what WP theme is that? And I can put in, uh, let's say, my domain name. Now, I'm going to tell you right now what my theme is. It's going to be uh, Ocean WP. That's my theme. So let me see what this word, this word, this uh, search is. Um, it says that I'm using Ocean WP. <laughs> that's right there. That's an interesting sound. Yes. Yeah. Never heard of that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a great one. The thing is, if you go to a website and you just like it, like mm -hmm. you think it's a WordPress site, go here and find what theme that is, and then like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, can you build something without any theme? Can you start from scratch? What do you mean? Like a blank website. Yeah, I mean, if, I you, if you start off a WordPress website, you just have a blank uh, page. It's hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, okay. Dolly, I think it is. <laughs> and it's had one or two other little things in there. It's nothing. Yeah, okay, just curious. You can, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, how you, that's how you start building a website. Yep. Now, when you are uh, creating additional pages, I'll tell you what I do, and I'm going to go through an example of this here in a moment. Is like I said, when, I, when I'm creating a new course, guess what I do? I go to my course page, and then one of my other course pages, I say duplicate page. <laughs> then I just go on the other. Sure. Yeah. So once you've got it done once, yeah. then you just copy it. So. Efficiency. <laughs> well, you, 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 will, I mean, you have to be a little bit anal because you may miss things. Like, hey, I'm creating this new course called Crafting Your Transformation, uh, 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 your Transformation Story, and I copy my online program creator. 
But I gotta go make sure that everyone that says oh, I'm a program creator that it's changed over because otherwise images will come up wrong or you know you go put you know I go put that on Facebook as whatever and show the, the, the wrong image on there because it's, I'm, I copied one page over. So you have to be a little bit anal about making sure you change everything. So, yeah, that's usually what I do. Yeah, and usually that's actually even what I recommend. Sure, that makes sense. So, so excuse my ignorance, but so WordPress does that work on top of SiteGround, or you don't need SiteGround? SiteGround is the host. There's the one that hosts the. They're they're like the the library that everything is. Yeah, I mean I, I create everything on on uh, on WordPress. Excuse me, yeah, on my WordPress site, but it's just hosted on 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 that. So one you need program. both. You need both, yes. Gotcha. And plus, the SiteGround is also where I'm going to be getting my email through as well. Okay. They're the ones who put the design website online. Yes, uh, on the internet. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. WordPress is meant to design the website. Correct. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Right. But, uh, and that's another. I'm going to keep going on the site notes. Whenever you are creating a website, and I think you want to do this, Brian. I don't know about the two of you guys, is to make sure that you're using your domain name and your email address. Yeah. All right. Don't buy Kevin A. Dunlop at gmail.com. Like, I put that on all my business cards. Like, yeah, you're not very professional. Right. <laughs> but Kevin at OptimalPerformanceAcademy.org. Yes. It's a lot better. <laughs> it's, it's those little things. So here, here are some of the here's here are the uh, plugins that I looked at earlier that I was highly, highly, highly recommend. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is I, I'm assuming you may or may not going to go into the X because I don't use Notion anymore. Um, is that I would strongly suggest you get this one here called Elementor. It's spelled like Element with O R F. <laughs> okay, so I'll go back to my plugins. Now again, the word plugin is the same thing as the word app. A plugin for websites, apps are for your phone. Or extensions, if you use. I, I couldn't cover extensions. I don't know. Okay. Um, so, so this 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 is Elementor right there. So, of course, it's only on the slides. Um, <laughs> So Elementor is how you build your website. That's your drag and drop. Okay. That's not part of WordPress. That, that's an extra plugin that you would download uh, in, uh, into your WordPress. I, I don't see the word spelled up there. Is it E L? Uh, I got a highlight right there. E L E M, Element O R. Okay. Yeah. Again, these are all free. I'm not. I'm not showing you any paid versions. Okay. So it's a no-code designing feature. Cool. Okay. And I'll show, I'm going to show that to you in a moment. So the other one that you want to add on is some, some additional pieces for Elementor. The next one would be the Elementor header and footer uh, builder. Okay, so that becomes important because on your, I don't know how to zoom in on that. Uh, that becomes important because on um, your footer is going to be something that you want to make sure you want to keep updated. Like for an example, what year are we in? 2023. Copyright 2021. Yeah, you gotta cut your footer. <laughs> so that's the footer where you usually put your terms of service, your uh, privacy policy, your copyright page. Because these these are things you can just change once, and it, ha it happens on all your pages. You may also have we'll talk about this in a moment as well. Something known as your site map. Yeah. But we'll go to, we'll we'll go into that in a moment. If you want to zoom in, hit Control and scroll up. Control and scroll up. With the two fingers. There you go. <laughs> I just did that. Okay. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> Thanks for helping us blind people on that. Yeah. I couldn't see it either. I also have glasses on. Yeah. Okay, so the next one I'm going to highly suggest is the one that's two more down from that one. It's called Essential Add ons for Elementor. So you're seeing I'm, I'm adding on all the extra little bonus features uh, for Elementor because yeah. I just want to add everything at my, at my capacity. Now, if you're on a PC, you can have it to where, because um, I, I, I'm usually working with uh, one or two extra screens, but if I hit my control key, I get a little ping. So, so I know where my mouse is. I use my mouse all the time. Um, so the next one after that is also called um, the premium, premium add-ons uh, for Elementor. Now, now, of course, I'm not. This is not a course. On, uh, this is a course on SEO, but this is not. I'm just giving you some very good. basic this information on building a website. Even the premium add-ons are free. 
Um, I did not go with the GoPro. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so it's the premium, not, not the premium pro. And you can do not basically what you need with the, the free, free one. Yes. Okay. Especially right now. Uh, as you guys are just getting started. Yes, there need to pay for these right now. Uh, the next one would be the, guess what? Unlimited. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I think you like elementary. <laughs> I'm, I'm using the, this, this builder, so why not get everything possible that I can put in? In every little nuance. Is Thanos involved in what you Thanos? Thanos. Thanos. Oh, Thanos. Thanos. Marvel. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Yeah. Right. Killed half the world's population. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to go back up to the top. And the next one I'm going to suggest you have is probably going to be uh, automatic. Is um, You most likely will have this. It's also called the Classic Editor. Now these two do kind of like work against each other, but the classic editor is where you're going to be doing your SEO. Okay, the elementary is where you're building your website. The classic is where you're doing your SEO. Okay. What was that name? Unlimited what? Unlimited uh, elements for elementary. Okay. Thank you. Now and uh, the next one I is probably by far the most important one. Um, even if you're not writing a blog, it's called Yoast. SEO. Y O A S T S E O. Now this is going to uh, what this is going to do. We'll go to this in a moment. It's going to give you two different uh, two different values. So it's called um, um, uh, SEO and then readability. It's going to give you. It's going to be a red light, yellow light, green light. That's all it's going to do. It's going to give you three uh, three indications of for each one. Now. I'm okay if readability is a yellow or a green, and I'm okay if uh, is, if uh, if the um, SEO is yellow or green. I prefer green, but if I see it's red, that definitely means I got to go and work on something. Because some things are going to be saying, "Well, you, your your tone is in a passive voice, 22.7 percent of the time. It should only be at 21 percent." So, so you get into that. So, but you don't always have to get green light. Where you're writing a blog, I suggest you're getting green lights. If you're writing a page. Then that may or may not be. Split. For example, I may say, "Hey, schedule my strategy session." I got forty words on the page. I'm gonna get all kinds of stuff. Like it's not at least three hundred words. It's not a disability. I don't care. The page is not meant to be done. That so it's just a guide. It. It's not something you must have. But it's it, but it's it's, it's more, probably to me the most powerful plugin uh, that uh, uh, that's used on WordPress. Another one is called, and now you, uh, there's free versions and, and, and paid versions. Uh, I like to use one called Smush. Okay, I, I, a little bit better version, I've never used it, it's called Kraken. And yes, like the in Poseidon, the Kraken, C-R-A-C-K-E-N. And what this does is it automatically uh, makes your uh, picture smaller without the, affecting your uh, 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 the, the image quality. So if you want your page to roll a little fast, which is part of your SEO, you want to make sure that the images are not too big. It compresses them. What's that? Does it compress them? It, can, it does compress them, yes. And then the last one uh, is also one of the most important ones. And everything else we can talk about at a later time. Uh, I use this one here. It's called Updraft Backup and, uh, Updrafts Plus Backup and Restore. So one thing about WordPress is that when you download a new plugin, you want to make sure you back up your your website before you download and or activate a new plugin. Does does what does uh, WordPress does it do version control for your for your site or your your? It will tell you when you need to upgrade uh, um, upgrade to another version. No, um, I don't mean that. That's that's version for for WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your all the work that you've done on your website. In WordPress, does it does it do like an automatic uh, or even a manual like copy and save of everything of all your work? Maybe? Yes and no. Um, now, one of the things I'm going to open another tab here again. I'm going to go off on another tangent. Um, one of the because I do work uh, with different companies right now, and uh, so I'm going to use uh, mywebsite.org and site and put in the word SiteGround. I mean, the reason I ask is that. Uh, uh, this, this is going, back up or it's going back and restore your website, all the pages, all yeah. the plugins, all, all the current default. So if you if you go in and I got a uh, download a new plugin or up, or even up, 
upgraded a plug-in and it caused your site to crash right. you can go back to the back. previous version well, the reason i asked it i thought i had read that that was one of the functions of wordpress so. well here's siteground now this is this is the um the special that they're running right now so i'm just going to go ahead and, say, and, and hit c plans now i am i am an affiliate of them i am of the grow big because i have more than one domain um what does it say here oh there it's up there So your web hosting is just doing a daily backup. Do you get that for startup? That um, yes. yes. Okay. Startup yeah. is two ninety nine. This is two bucks more. So um, how is that different from updraft update updraft plus? Well, this is a, this is a do, doing daily backup, and I'm sure this a, it could be doing something very similar. Um, the reason I'm, I'll go with the uh, site ground is because of that one right there as well, free SSL. Yeah. And that's also true on the other versions. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much this is backing up as far as like WordPress does. I always go and I, I mean, it just it's a thing I do. If I'm going to do any updates to my WordPress site, I always go and back it up. Belt and suspenders. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the worst case scenario is that you got two backups. I mean, yeah, that's exactly. a big of a deal. Exactly. Um, now, whenever you are, um, it goes. So whenever, because whenever you get a new plugin, most of the time it's going to appear here over on the left hand side as, as the functionality. Updraft Plus appears up here on the top right. So if I were to, wanted to do this, I'm not going to do this right now. I think the backup and restore, and then it's going to take me to a page um, for me to do this. I can back it up now. I can schedule it. The last time I backed it up was on February 13th. Does it keep more than one backup? <laughs> it goes back to like two or three. Like here's my previous versions down here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I mean, if, I, if something were to happen and I, I am able to get back to my dashboard then I can go back and, and, and re reinstall a previous version. And then I can go, uh, go, you know, go and test as to which plugin is. Because if something like that happens, what you do is you deactivate all of your plugins and you turn on one. You turn on it, and, and, and you do this in incognito mode, so you don't have any cookies that say mm. into your cache. Right. So, so you go there, then you find out which one it is. It could be a time. But it's better than not being able to do it. Well, exactly, and that's why you want to back it up. Yeah. Okay, so now we were talking about uh, A2 hosting and Green Geeks. Again, I use SiteGround. Uh, this is the one of, of my preference. I just turned on to this like probably about eight years ago, and the main reason was because of the free SSL. That's when I that's when I switched over from GoDaddy to GoDaddy. GoDaddy was charged like one hundred and fifty dollars a year for their service. Definitely talking about SSL. Do those prices change every year? Uh, this is this is a, a promo that they're doing right now. So I would say if you're interested in something like this, I would suggest talking to me or you know, go, go to the album. And I've got the links all over there. Awesome so does that price stay that price after a year or is it? I do not know because uh, normally what you do is you pay this uh, by the year. I think I was paying like $120 a year mm -hmm. uh, for my, uh, for this one, for the Go Big. Now, if for those of you that only have one website, then yeah, the start will be perfectly fine. You can always upgrade. If you decide you want to get another website. Just hosting your charge? Yeah. There's always a fee for it. Hosting all, always a fee. All of them will. Uh, <laughs> That's how they make their money. I yeah. It's because you, you know, when somebody goes to your website, you're technically on their servers, mm -hmm. and therefore they've got to pay for their servers, the, the, the maintenance and key. Now, one of the things that you may, depending on uh, how, how, how popular your website is, one of the other things are like, hey, this is for if I'm getting a hundred thousand dollar, a hundred thousand visits a month versus ten thousand. If, for example, you started a real estate investment company, and so you get, you start getting all these visitors coming to your website, and your website that they went down because somebody overloaded the server. <laughs> yeah. ah. it doesn't even happen unless your website's really popular. Yeah, but like, like if you had an ad on the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go into, um, so what do you want to put, so you guys already know what SEO is. It stands for search engine optimization. It's how uh, the search engine is going to optimize your website. Okay. So having these things uh, to your, uh, on your site is going, to, is going to be extremely helpful. Now, according to a statistic that I looked at yesterday, is that 60% of the world has internet access. Six zero or one six? Six zero. I mean, you got to look at all, like, you know, they're talking about even the rural countries. The, the rural African states sure. that where people are, that are living in huts and they're not going to have any access. Korea, the entirety of it. Yeah. 
chime in for some parts. Um, now, uh, now the definition of SEO, this is one of the things I looked at right here, is that SEO is the practice of optimizing your web page to increase your website's visibility organically. Not, this is not paid ads, this is organically. By the way, do you use paid advertising? Yeah, you use paid uh, Google ads, um, Facebook ads, and that's, that's yeah. something we'll talk about next week. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, so, so as an example, this does not ex exist anymore. But uh, back when I lived in Las Vegas, uh, in 2009, that was a huge year for me, October 2009. I think I may have told you this. Um, I, I may have told you this. Uh, I went to a real estate uh, conference, and they were giving away two freebies. And, I, and what they were giving away, the people that were talking about the importance of video, the importance of video. And I won this. Flip camcorder. <laughs> I've shot probably over 100 videos, 150 videos using this. This exact one. Do you still do it? I don't I use my cell phone now. Well, I was, yeah, I was going to say. I shot this today. I shot this earlier today because I was shooting a Facebook ad, shooting that, and I had this shooting at a 90 degree angle. So this is in the Kevin Historical Museum. <laughs> this, this is my, it, it still works. Cool. Um, the thing is, uh, video is huge. Now, when I was in Las Vegas, this was 2009 when I won this. I shot my very, very first video, and it is still on YouTube. I don't know if I, I think I told you about this. I want to see if I can find it. Because I've probably shot over 500 videos over the course of 14 years of how to shoot. shoot I'm sorry, what was it? So I shot over 500 videos. Oh, wow. Um, now, do you appear in most of these? Oh, I appear in all of them. Now, when I got out of when I got out of, um, when I got out of real estate, I um, yep, there it is. When I got out of real estate, I took down all of my videos. That's you charging triple murder and rape. <laughs> so my very first video. Oh yeah, this yeah. This, oh, oh, my right. name is that's Kevin W. Like Kevin You're A. Like, there it is. <laughs> oh, this is good for your brand. <laughs> so I know. So how long ago did I upload that video? Oops. Look at the time. <laughs> So how long ago did I, upgrade, uh, did I upload that video? 13 years ago. 13 years ago. <laughs> My very first video. It's the only like one that I left up on my And it is horror. I mean, I mean come on. Yeah. Why, why, it why, man? I don't want to hear the, the audio. So I, mean, it, I was a lot heavier You're back then. You're trying to sell the house? I don't. <laughs> and, and, and essentially, I mean, you know, my, my SEO on this is going to be very low because it's, you know, it's been too many years. How do you have the SEO showing on your videos right there? I do not know. That's where, where, where is that? This is SEO 11 out of 100. I mean, look at that right there. I'm sitting in a shack. Would, would, you, would you blow that up and show uh, me the audio, please? Maybe. It's always out of 100. If you type, if you type in Kevin Dunlap Liberation, you'll find it. Okay. No, but that SEO thing is. I don't know what that is. I mean, it's just. I think it's got 11% out of 100%. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I mean, and there's no engagement. I mean, I, these are new statistics, uh, new statistics that I guess uh, YouTube is doing right now. But again, um, for me, when I, whenever, whenever I was doing my uh, uh, doing these videos, if I understood the importance of SEO. I also, you have an extension on Chrome? That's why it's giving me that stuff. I don't know. No, the stuff on the right hand side is our Chrome extension. And I'll go over that in a moment. Okay. But the, with these statistics here, I'm, I'm, I don't think that is an extension. Um, I mean, it could be, but I don't see anything up here that's YouTube related. I mean, it doesn't naturally have those, so it has to, I'm guessing it's an extension. It might be part of uh, the, uh, the, the That's what I'm thinking. Keywords. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, but anyway, um, so one of the things I, I learned a long time ago, is back when I, was, when I was shooting a video, and I was using YouTube with backlinks going to my website, that after some time, if you typed in lease option, which is what my specialty was, Las Vegas, I was on page one of Google usually four times five times. What was that last part? Four or part of Four or five times on page one oh, on Google. Oh, really? So oh. That, that was how you, that's how your SEO starts becoming important. It's by keep giving out good content, you know, giving yeah. out content. Now, I'm not talking about trying to get an Instagram following or LinkedIn following. That's not going to happen on, you know, you know for Google uh, uh, searches. But the thing is, having this uh, stuff going in there. Now, what I'm going to... How long do you think I should? Probably a year or two. 
To make the video? No, oh. to, to get to start getting the video. Oh, no, the but the thing is, it, it is all about you know getting your uh, you know, getting stuff out there. Now we'll be talking about links here in a, in a, in a moment. So this is basically how what, uh, what crawlers do. They, they actually they, they will send out these things called spiders. They're going to go to your website. They're going to go here, and they're going to crawl every single page. They're going to crawl the, all these pages. They're going to crawl, uh, crawl all my blogs. They're going to crawl the, the about me page, my home page. They're going to go, go through with basically everything. These crawlers don't generate a transcript of the audio from videos. No, no, no. Yeah. They, they, they cannot. They, 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 that technology is not uh, available yet on Google, not on YouTube. I don't know. Because yeah. if you, if you, well, they they will give you the transcript. They'll give you. The only problem is they transcript. won't give it to you in the form that you can easily copy the whole thing and then take they it off. Used they, they used they, to. A few years I wish they would do that because I could get a lot more value out of some of these really heavy, you know, knowledge type YouTube channels. Well, the thing is, if you're going to be creating a, a video, especially uh, training videos and stuff like this, then having a transcript uh, at the bottom is is uh, is highly preferred. Yeah. Good for SEO too. It's good for SEO, number one. And number two, a lot of people are <clears throat> looking at your video possibly at work. <laughs> <laughs> no audio. No audio, I kind of it. So. You can have subtitles on the video if you turn the audio off, but it's not always accurate. Yeah, it'll right. auto generate them on its own. Yeah, transcripts and things like that, you have to go with because uh, unless you'd like, you know, when you're doing a text message, it goes, yeah, hey, send him my message to Casey, period. Tell him that. <laughs> period. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever caught yourself Sorry. actually saying period when you're talking to someone? <laughs> <laughs> I have. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> when I have a Chrome extension that will do that, because I have a Chrome extension for YouTube that will speak, or you can slow the video down and pause it. I also have one that will show it in English and Spanish at the same time. I bet you can okay. have a Chrome extension. Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to actually install Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, you said you don't use Five, it. Five, 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 Five. Yeah, I can pick one. Well, again, everything else, because uh, 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 Chrome is a, is a Google product. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's probably Google much Google. better. Huh? <laughs> you can do Google stuff, use a Google product. Yeah, that's I have to jump between the back and forth, so I get it. I like Firefox, too. You can just use it. Yeah. So, so uh, now these things up here are, are all the extensions, or most of the extensions that I'm using on, on Google. So if you don't know how to get an extension, you go up here where it says the three dots, go down here where it says more tools, and then you'll have extensions. This is how you get to your extensions. Now there's going to be two extensions I'm going to highly recommend that you have, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of typing online. The first one, I'm going to go to my extensions just to show them to you. Uh, so this is what's going to happen when you get to extensions. You will have these here that you can turn on or, 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 or turn off. So I can turn these on or turn these off at any one time. For, like, for example, that BitFinder wallet, I can turn that on and off. Cattily, I don't use much anymore because I do everything through another, another program now. So I can technically, I can just go and turn that one off. So you, it just disappeared. So I turn it back on, you'll see it will reappear at the very top. It was, it was right there. I was looking at the Calendly for keeping a ca calendar. What do you use now? I use uh, I use a company called Keep, and Keep does everything from landing pages, from sales pages to um, email campaigns to calendar schedules to. I mean, it, oh, it does a lot. Okay. It does a lot. So if you go to uh, if you wanted to talk about that, my my website uh, forward slash Keep Consult. That that we would sit down and talk about the, the powers of, of Keep. I, it, it is a little bit more expensive, but if you don't need to uh, worry about you know a MailChimp account, try to figure out how to connect it to your landing pages account, try to connect it to your ClickFunnels account, try to connect it. Kind of lead account, right? like all that goes into one. That sounds like a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I went the I, I went the, the, the piece no, uh, for years. Now I used NoChip for for quite a few. When I was in real estate, I only I only used NoChip. I that's that too. What's the name? A MailChimp. Oh, Mail, MailChimp. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a, a an email uh, service provider. Yeah. Um, that's even more than just be your service provider. Don't they have like features and stuff? They have some features. They have, if you've got the paid version, you do what they call, what they call journeys, uh, which is basically your campaigns, how they you know, send yeah. emails, if then, like a Fortran code, right. if then, then that, or wait yeah. six days and then send an email. Schedule. Yeah, yeah auto responders and stuff. Like yeah. Okay. Milton is good for that. When I was just sending out an you know, email blast once a week, like, here's my three new houses I have this week, it, 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 it worked perfectly fine. But right now, now that I'm doing sales funnels and things like that, that's way beyond what uh, uh, Notion is not at the level that I need it to be at. So that's why I left Notion. Thank you. It's also expensive. You have a lot of emails to send. 
Yeah, well, you can, you're limited to the number of emails you can send as well as how big is your database. Well, the, the free version allows you something like 1,500 a month, but if you have more than that, you can pay to have like 100,000 a month or something, which is really expensive. Well, so, depends you, what you're doing it for. Yeah, and that's why you go, if you're interested in finding out uh, the budgets, you go to Keep Consult, schedule a time with me, and we'll come talk. But anyway, the, the first one that I'm going to highly uh, suggest that you have is this one here. It's called Grammarly. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, so when you're typing, um, if you're typing in Word, it's going to have a little blue or a little red underline for, hey, we suggest you do something like this. If you're doing this as a blog, Grammarly is highly beneficial. Now, one of the things I would suggest that you do if you download Grammarly, I did not know this for like nine months. It was like, I kept saying, like, we wanted to spell the word theater as T A T A T A T A T R E, like, no, that's the British. Yeah, I, 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 I had the UK English yeah. set of uh, words, the, the American. Color is O U R. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. make sure you send. That's my number one rant about uh, British English. <laughs> it's it's the misuse of the. Uh, so what is it called? Uh, it, it's basically it's like. Today, Apple are going to, it's, uh, you know, they take organizations and put them in the and, plural. In the plural. Well, no, Apple, yeah, Apple is, is a singular, R is plural. Yeah, yeah, it just drives me up a tree. I'm um, sorry. And what really gets me is when I hear, you know, American accent people starting to ape this, starting to copy it. It's like, did you hear grammar in school? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, that's it. Okay. So I would highly uh, having uh, suggest you have this one, like Grammarly, and the second one I'm going to suggest you have is called Keywords Everywhere. So this, uh, you know, as I'm working with new uh, business owners as they're trying to start and grow their businesses, Keywords Everywhere becomes extremely important. Now I will show you why. Um, let's go to Google. Now, Sabrina, give me a topic. Any topic. I don't care what it is. Something you like. Cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, well, cheesecake. That's good, actually. <laughs> so, so you, you've got cheesecake here. These are your search results. And then over here on the right hand side is all the data. Uh, these are a transfer uh, for cheesecake. This is what this, that's what this uh, keywords everywhere is doing. That's what that red key and a black circle background is doing. Is, is this here? Then it's going to uh, give you th that uh, that information there. And then if you're looking for uh, keywords, key uh, these are keywords. So if you're trying to create SEO for your business, you need to find other keywords that are related to your business. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's beautiful. This yeah, is powerful. Yeah. Uh, so, so so you you turn on the extension and then you went to Google and, and you I just searched did. for cheesecake and then how did it come up with that uh, chart up there that statistic well, the, uh, well, the, like, well the first the very first one that you could this here is just going to be like a cheesecake factory or something like that some yeah. definitions yeah. so everything below that where it says related keywords so if you're looking for the say uh, uh, cheesecake recipe cheesecake factory cheesecake near me other uh, uh, other okay. metrics those two be, boxes are put in by the extension. there's five yes. there's five boxes actually What's oh, with the, the, okay. the red cane and the black circle are yeah. all related to the okay. So, so, Sweet so, 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 your long tail keywords. <laughs> and so, so oh. that's, that's. What is a long tail keyword as opposed to a normal keyword? Well, GCA is probably not the best one to do. Um, <laughs> this is hard yeah, to qualify. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. There's, the, there's the chart I was talking about with that red chart thing. Let me talk about the forest. Trending. It's trending more. <laughs> You're a leader, a thought leader. So the SEO difficulty, 46 out of 100, is that saying it's pretty hard to rank high? Like yeah, high pretty hard. Because I'm typing a very, very general, yeah. general word. But uh, you know, if, you're, if you're writing something on, on a forest, then uh, forestry, just go and find other ones. Can you use um, a multi word phrase also? Yeah. Okay. It's actually using a long tail keyword, and it'll give you other long tail keywords and then short, uh, short keywords. So whenever you start to do, like you talk about doing ads, you know what you want to do. You want to start. You, know, you, uh, you want to make your website more searchable. Like say, what words can I use in my page? What words can I use in my blogs? Keywords everywhere is ideal for that. Now you will see the difference. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to turn it off. 
piece off that. So the K is no longer up there. Now I'm going to go back up here and close that one out and type in the word forest again. So you, bless you. So you now see I typed in the word forest again after I turned off the keywords everywhere, and you will see there's nothing. There. Now go to YouTube, see if it was that extension. It <laughs> could be. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I go to YouTube and just refresh. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I like it. I'm gonna start using that one. So keywords everywhere was the one that's also giving me my data on, on these different videos. What was it you guys just found out just then? The extension was showing the SEO ranking on the YouTube. Oh, yeah, that's right, what it was right, right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not the only one that I could think that it could that it could. Have been. I feel that's what it was. Good call okay. on that, yeah. So. I would highly, highly, highly have these two links. Because grammar is going to get your, uh, your, your pronunciation and, and spelling errors and things like that. And then keywords everywhere is going to help you with when you're trying to discover uh, what is it that you want to be a ranking for. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go, I, I don't normally talk about, I would not normally talk about this in, uh, um, uh, in SEO training. But I'm going to say if you can get another one, if you're looking to do the website, there's this one called Color Pick Eyedropper. And that, and that's not in my notes. So this is me going off on a tangent again. Now, a color pink eyedropper. Now, whenever you're building your business, and this again is not SEO related, but this is all about continuity on your website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you're doing your website, you want to make sure that you have one, uh, one, two, or possibly three primary colors. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna go on the board and, uh, and let's talk about that for a second. We have yes. what's called a brand guideline, so you'll choose like two primary colors and then secondary colors to use for everything. So everything should only have only those colors. Yeah. So if your app is like a blue app, your website should be similar. There's a guy on uh, YouTube that does Tesla videos, mm -hmm. and he uses a kind of an aqua green. Sure. And it's very, uh, yeah, you just, very you know it immediately, just think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So when, whenever you're coming with your, now with Color Pink Eyebrow, I will show you what that does in a moment, but let me tell you what, what a color is. I'm sure you guys have heard of a, a, a decimal, like zero through nine. You've heard of alpha uh, A through A through Z, you've heard of binary, zeros and ones. So when you're talking about colors, these are in what is known as the hexadecimal. Okay, so it's, a, it's called a hexadecimal. And what that means is, as a hexi means that it's 16 characters in it. Okay, so what that does is it's gonna go zero through nine and then A through F. So. So whenever you're coming up with your colors, I would strongly suggest you know exactly what hexadecimal code is, or, or hexadecimal numbers that you have. I'll tell you what, what my, my main one is A four two six B nine. That's my that's my main color. Come on, stop this. <laughs> <laughs> my my second color, I call it badass. It's like a badass. <laughs> that's, that's my second color. B B A D five five. So guess what? If you get my business cards over there, guess what? And you see the purple color? That's the A4269. That's that brand guideline, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, those colors right there. Oh, which, one's, which one's badass, the pink? Uh, no, that's uh, the, the gold. gold. That is uh, it's gold. That's right so, uh, so my colors are, are, are purple and gold. So what I would suggest that you do, the reason that I drop a uh, color uh, uh, is so important, Let's go to my website again. Let's just say, or let's go to Meetup. Let's say you want, I love that color profile, uh, color red. Let's say that this is the color that you want. I will go up here and turn on the color eyedropper by just clicking on the little icon there. Uh, I'll go down, for, huh? and there's the color, F6585. Wow, oh, cool. That's kind of neat. That's super cool. <laughs> So I think it's you RGB, does it do CMYK or no? Um, well, I mean, if, if you talk about RGB, that's the, the uh, what is it, red, blue, yellow? It's, so that's for digital, CMYK is for, CMYK is for print. I was just curious, it's something fine for me. Or let's say you like this uh, color, let's, the, let's say you like that color right there. 
F F F six four zero six. That's missing a character. I don't know why. Why it's missing. Yeah, the other one was two. Yeah, because usually those six digits. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that would give you an idea of the color that you're using. So when you're coming, uh, creating your business cards, your flyers, or your web. I see why. If you go back up to it, it's just pushed off to the side. Oh yeah, you can see it's right. cut off. Okay, yeah, it's just cut off. So uh, white is F F F F F, and black is zero 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 zero. So so it starts with zero and goes through F. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, if, you, if you're on my website up here, for an example, if I go to go to my homepage, and I scroll down, this color here should be BDA D55. That's that's the gold color. Um, that the color there should be A4 A4 26 B9. So I keep these on a little sticky note on on, on my wire. <laughs> like, right now, What's that color again? Yeah. <laughs> so I always know what's proposed this color and goes this color. So that's those a, are my two colors. That's a really insightful technique, I think. It's like you own those colors if you know your Well, that's it's your brand. Yeah. Because if you go to, let's say, I want my business card to be purple. Well, what what shape? What hue? What now? What, what, what purple means? There's a thousand different purples. Mm -hmm. We don't always go with gold. Maybe this is like your flash. So, so you an example of a brand guy that we've created. So I'm going to turn this off. Escape. Okay. So anyway, that's that, that's that's going into your your, your brain colors. Um, now, one of the things that you're going to be needing in all in uh, on your web page is you're going to have to have three kinds of links. When you're writing a blog, this is the most important. Is you have to what's called an outbound link. You're going to need what's called inbound links. And you're also going to need what's called internal links. Okay, I would have to write that down. Can you give them all three again? Outbound links. Well, this is outbound and, and, and internal, and then also inbound links. So is outbound and internal the same? No. Outbound, outbound means that you are, you're writing a blog and then you have a link that goes outside of your website. Like it goes to Amazon. I don't know. YouTube. Amazon, yeah. YouTube goes to. I use uh, Wikipedia a lot. Like mm -hmm. I said, and let's talk about lease options, and on the lease options, be out. Oh, I'm not. Lease <laughs> lease <laughs> lease yeah. option. So, so I, so. I always, but uh, when you do an outbound link, that means it's got to go to a reputable, reputable website. If you go to a website that has no security certificate, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I found this out. That's all I can say. Jeez. So if you go to an outbound, if you want to make sure it's going to your reputable site. <laughs> because when Google has the spiders coming in, there's a whole, look at this link, and then that little spider will go uh, you know, down that little leg or web, whatever you want to call it, um, to go, you know, where is that web, you know, where is that going to? So you, whenever you're writing something on your page, outbound links and internal links are going to be critical. When you write a blog, it is highly suggested you have at least minimum one outbound link and two internal links. Are internal links also generic URLs, or are they a different know what you mean. In, Internal links? Mm -hmm. They just go to your other pages. Yeah, I know, but do they get there? How do they get to that page? Do you they, have. Do they go out as a URL and come back? Yes. In? So yeah, your, you your have link on your site as a URL to your other. Yeah, okay. Right. To it, right? So let me um, go to my blog as an example. Usually in your menu. Yeah. That's technically. An internal link, I believe, yeah, because right. it goes to the website. But you can have it in your blog. So here, here's a blog. Uh, mm -hmm. Should you, so you create your own course, your own online course? So if I were to open this thing up here, um, I you should see if I did this correctly. Carlton Sheets. That's going to be going to Wikipedia. So okay. you can see the lower left-hand corner. That's a website that's that's being referenced to. If I were to go down uh, later on inside here, I also created my own course called Online Program Creator. Notice it's Optimal Performance Academy, dot org, forward slash Optimal Dash Performance Academy. So I'm, now I'm going to do my course on my website. From a SEO standpoint, is it good to have internal links? It's a requirement. I was just going to ask you, you said you require, you recommend two? A minimum of two. So what about outbound links? Outbound links a minimum of one. That's per uh, per blog, and I'm going more now into a blog. Now Yoast is going to let you know if you're if you're not if you're failing that. What about your menu? Does that I think 
Is that included in those minimums or not? I, I would assume not because the menu appears on every single page. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a kind of like a, a default, but I would say in the content or the body of the uh, of the content that you're writing. On that so page. if you don't have those minimums, do you just not rank as high on SEO? Yeah, it just it's oh. a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a so, but the thing is, once you start writing blogs, once you start writing blogs, reference your other blogs. Yeah, blogs are requirements for SEO almost because it they has really so much are. keywords and yeah. And you get your keywords from where? Keywords everywhere. <laughs> there you go. When you're so, writing your yeah, go ahead. Are, are videos better than written blogs? It's good to have both, but yeah. because people like to watch videos, but it's not good for ranking in SEO. Right. Uh, okay. You need tight content for SEO. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. okay. the crawler has to be able to. Yeah. Uh, to see the word in the in the body, he's not going to be. Able, the spider like like, let me watch this video in Japanese. <laughs> okay, it's great. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So, does the crawler look content of the blogs? Um, yes, because they want to make sure. Because what a lot of people used to do, like 10, 15 years ago, they'll go and put in like very, very uh, tiny type, like size one font, but all of these keywords hidden in the blog. Yeah. Spiders got to be keep working on that. Differentiate between your regular web pages versus the blog. They both have text. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. It, it just recognizes that it's your website that's. But it gives you more content for it to analyze. Of course. That's what the blogs are meant to do: is have more keywords on your website. Okay. okay. And it shows activity. Yes, that's, yeah. that's what I'm going to ask that a second ago. Ah. Activity. You should do two to four a week activity on your website. The blogs are great. No, I'm gonna this ask y'all. This is insights, man. I love it. Thank you guys. Wow. Now I'm gonna show you this blog right here. This is the blog I posted a couple of days ago. Oh, and I would like for you guys to look over the blog. Not tell me, you know. Now, I, you know, obviously I put in that image, um, but uh, no, go over the blog and just look. You know, just look over, skin it, and tell me what you think. I'm going to scroll down. So you don't need to read the whole thing. You can see my links. There's links and a lot of text. Okay. A lot of keywords. Now, give me a guess how long it took me to write that book. Depends. Did you use AI or did you internally? <laughs> <laughs> it took me less than one minute. Oh. You use AI. Okay. I checked GPT. Wrote so, that book. That's why I would never say, I wrote this blog. I was always I posted this blog. <laughs> so I, just so I have a question about that because Google recognizes if something is written by AI. It, it may. It does. And it'll be like, no SEO for you, sorry. Well, that's why I went in there and I added, I added this sentence in here with the link in it. And then I also went in and I, uh, and I uh, changed the, the thing a little bit as well for that. So that's what I would suggest doing is because I've used it myself. AI is use it as a reference of what to write. Don't copy and paste what it says. Correct. And this was a copy and paste. This was text. I did this specifically just for a text. That's cool. So this was a copy and paste? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You didn't modify anything. I, I changed like the first uh, sentence here. I add, so I could sort of put the link in there. I added this one in there so I could put the link in there. I put that sentence in as well. So everything else was, put your name into it or something. Yeah, yeah. small little edits. So I, everything I, else was, uh, was uh, okay. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> used chat yet, but I've seen a lot of you know, stuff on the TV. It's <laughs> blowing up now. Right here. And the thing that I noticed, it seems to write in a fairly passive voice. It does. And this was actually, I got I got flagged from Yos of being an impassive voice. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we're talking about Yoast, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is why I like uh, having WordPress websites. Okay. And now again, a post is is a blog post, and a page is a web page. Okay. Say that again. It's a a blog post is a post is, is considered a post on WordPress, and a web page is considered a page. How does web How does WordPress tell the difference between them? Well, uh, if I go to the top here. If I want to write a post, I go here where it says posts. Uh -huh. If I want to create a web page, I go here to create a page. So there's something about the internal structure that WordPress can tell. It also, depending on how you got your everything set up, it's also going to how, how it bunches things together. Yeah. So for an example, if I go back to that lead magnet, um, you, you will see here that is uh, how I've got to set it up. Here's, here's are the, the most recent posts that, that I've done, a blog post, and then these are the categories. And I put my posts into categories. So you, know, that you can, so you can go and find similar oh, cool. books. By the way, do you recommend doing bulleted or numbered uh, text for, for 
belongs just to make them break them up. Make yeah, them I mean, that's what this one is. Uh, that's I, measure, yeah, readability. So yeah, that's part of your readability. Yeah. That doesn't do anything with SEO, it's just for the readers. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, uh, and it's up to you, like in this case, this, these are numbered, which is fine. Like, here's the six top uh, things, you label six. Or like this is what the this is what's going to be involved in this course, and those will be just bullet points. So it all depends on how you want to structure right. your, your, your your thing. So I had to Google what passive voice was. Is so passive voice is bad for your website? It's just boring. Nobody's going to read it. Yeah. Boring. Gosh, you got to go check. So if I I want to go in here, I want to look at my posts. Too informative, really. Oh. Okay. Uh, you can see, I'm, I'm clicking on posts. Okay. I'm, cl I'm clicking on posts up there right now. Okay. So. At this point in time, I'm not going to back up again. Okay, so these are my four posts. So if I wanted to create a new blog, I just hit add, right there, uh, add new, and then I'm just going right to content, find the image, and put the image in. I'll talk about images in a moment as well. Uh, Kevin, do you recommend using any text formatting for blogs, like bold, underlined, italic? Use it in paragraph form, and then whenever you're writing, uh, and this is something I'm probably going to talk about another time. But I, um, let's go. I'd recommend it. I, I tend to like to do it myself because it just kind of pulls out. Well, the, you want to be a, a little bit careful whenever you, you're yeah. doing this. It got like here. So here's the uh, here's the actual post itself. Now, one of the things I can do, you see here, this is a, it's in paragraph form. Yeah. If I wanted to create uh, subheadings, then you can uh, go and, and and start putting in. I want to put a heading one, heading two, heading three. Never ever ever put heading one. Don't, Ever. don't do this yourself by bolding things only and changing the Use size. Their... Use that right there. Yes. So it'll look for a heading specifically. Right. Yeah, yeah, the code was going to, if I were to go in there and look at the coding, it would say uh, uh, H2 equals blah, blah, blah uh, in the code. If I just make it oh. bold and make it size 16 font, that is, that's, that's going to be definitely. Yeah, exactly. So, and one of the things that if you're writing a blog is that you do want to use headings. Yeah. You definitely want to use headings. Again, never use heading one. Can I ask you why you suggest not using heading one? Because your title is heading one. So you mean like the web page name yes. is heading one? So you always start with heading two. Okay. Okay. But, but aside, from that, to the spiders. <laughs> aside from that, Alan, the text itself, do you, do you like to use any kind of formatting there, bold, underline? I, well, no. The only times that I'm going to start uh, doing formatting like that is if I'm referencing something that's a course of my own, and this is just my own uh, my own style, is I will bold it and I will also uh, put it in, in italics. Uh -huh. If I'm rever it's like if you were to uh, yeah, yeah, say my okay. roadmap course, I was like roadmap for business success. That would be in time. If I it's going to be on the, our our platform on customer hub, customer hub would just be bolded. So I wanted to make sure that there was a distinction between the two. Every once in a while, I will use the underline. Um, okay. And how do you put your own links, let's say outgoing links in here? That's actually pretty easy. Let's say here, let's say I'm going to say lead magnets, and I want to have it go to my, my, my own web page. So I'm highlighting the word lead magnets. You will see this little chain up here. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so that's an email. So you, you put it as a new email. So let me say I, I'm going to make that into my, uh, my main website. Man, this is all very distracting from the technical work I'm doing right now. So I'm getting enthusiastic. Now, I, I, now, I'm going to hit Control A and Control C, so I'm going to copy this because sometimes it kind of gets a little screwy here. Is now I'm going to hit this little gear. Okay. When you hit the little gear, that's what that's the URL that it's going to. That's what the text name. You always want to make sure you have it go into a new window, a new tab. Always. Oh, I hate that. What, what is that? I don't even know what that means. It's so you don't lose the web page you were on that you found that link. He doesn't want you to go away from his website. He Especially wants you to if it's an outbound link. Yeah. That makes me Okay. Uh, so what is it you're actually doing then? So this will actually, if somebody went to click on this, they're on the, they're on my tab, the page here, on, on the tab, a new tab will open up, and, that's, and that, that link will go to that one. So when you click, oh, your page will stay. My, yes. Yeah, that tab will stay open. That's the okay. important part. Yeah, this page important. stays open. And, and how did you do that? Just click the little open link in the new tab. Oh, okay, yeah. It's in the settings when you, you're yeah. typing in the link. Yeah. So I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not going to actually add, <laughs> add that link to it. But that, that's, how, that's, how you, um, that's how you put in your outbound links. That's also how you do your internal, internal links. links. You can also have it linked to send an email. 
So you can have it, if you click let magnet or whatever, you can have it email somebody instead. That I've never seen. So if you do it right now, you can do mail to one word and then a colon, and then you can type in someone's email, and it'll literally open up in your whatever email services you use uh -huh. to send an email. And then so for the you, URL, where do you put text in the, where do you put text at the body text of the email? So you type it out yourself. Right, right here? No. So <laughs> the, it's only part of your email browser. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, then, open so like if you use Outlook, it'll open up yeah, Outlook yeah, for yeah, you to yeah, send yeah, it yeah. as an email. But you have to have that plugin as well. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's, well, yeah. So that's, that's actually going to be on what we're trying <laughs> to get. send it to a group or something. Yeah. Some but the thing is, the main thing that I'm going to try to get at here is that yeah, you want to have your outbound links on your uh, in your blogs so that you're going out. So that's what that's when Google uh, spiders are crawling your website that they're going to say, hey, this is an active site and it's you know and it's and it's showing that activity. This is why with any outbound link, you want to make sure that it does open up in the new tab, even though you may hate it. In no, I hate when it doesn't. When it, you click the link, oh. it oh, replaces the page you're on. It makes me crazy. You just have to close it, and then you'll be back. No, I no. know, but I just like, usually I just right click and say, oh, undo, 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 back, 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 back. Yeah, 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 but like. Which you have, now if you're a redirect, and then it takes you there, you get the key, key back, so you have to go back, too. It's <laughs> like the computer. So always open up in a new tab. Now, whenever you're done, you go to say, hit the, uh, the words is update here. Now, notice my readability says it needs improvement. <laughs> the AI generated <laughs> readability says it needs improvement. Going back to grade school, it needs improvement. <laughs> so, so when you're uh, whenever you're writing your blogs or your pages or stuff, after you get done with that, um, uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to do this as a page instead of a, as a blog because I'm going to do I'm going to do it this way. Uh, so I'm going to actually back out of this and I'm not going to ch change anything. So I'm going to just go back to posts. And now so I'm going to posts or blogs, right? Yeah, posts or blogs, blog posts, yes. Um, now I'm going to go to I, I go to my pages. Now I also want my pages to to rank for SEO as well. So if somebody's tapping in something, I want them I want them to find it by going to my pages. Now let me go to my website as an example. So, so you have an idea. I have what I call my online classes, the second one from the top. Okay. So I have uh, nine classes uh, that I that I have recorded. Uh, again, this is all in WordPress. So th these are all the classes that, that I recorded. Each class that I have, I have my more information page, which, which is basically one page describing the, uh, the course. Mm -hmm. and then I also have, you can buy it now, and that will take you to a checkout form that's on Keep. Who do you use for your uh, online purchasing? Keep is the word he is with the buy. Keep app slash checkout. Yeah. yeah what was your calendar thing? It, calendar, everything I do is through Keep. Now, the calendar the, the calendar is, in, is internal inside of Keep. However, when you buy through my checkout form, it technically it goes through Stripe, and I get paid by Stripe. I mean, you can do PayPal, you can do whatever, but, but the checkout form is on is on Keep. So saves you the trouble of having to somehow link up with Stripe. Is that I just I, I did the one integration once with Stripe. Yeah. So now, if somebody were to buy that program, they will actually go through a process. They'll get an email chain. They'll get all kinds of tag. I mean, it's everything is done through Keep. They're like a middleman. Yeah. 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 So for an example, let's say the online program creator. So uh, I just clicked on it for more information. Guess what happened? I see the new program. Magic. <laughs> ah. So, so inside here and now in our bed, uh, an embedded video uh, that I have on YouTube. Now the, the reason this is important now is here is like I went and created this video and I uploaded it to YouTube. In the content of the video, and this is a public video. In the content of the video is a reference to this web page. That's my inbound link. Ah. Ooh. So I've got my out, my right there, other location right. coming to my to my internal location. So if I were to look at the SEO uh, on this page, this SEO will only measure outbound and internal. It cannot measure the uh, the inbound. Well, how does it then? It does, does it do anything? It, about, it, oh, yeah, it, that's how. That's how. When when the spider is crawling YouTube and then they could yeah, come to right, my right, website, right, right. it will match that. But Yoast SEO is not measuring YouTube. It doesn't have access to their database. Yeah. So I think it's just not. Well, this is not a video on my page. This is embedded. That's a link to this video. Embedded okay. I, there, there is a plug Oh, wait a minute. You said this is embedded? Yes, it's embedded. 
So what does that mean? Does that that mean? means the code uh, for it to be played on YouTube is on my website without the video being on my website. Okay, all right, good. So, so this could literally be a YouTube video, except yes. it looks like it's coming from like Vimeo or something. It's, uh, it's actually YouTube. I know it's got the blue thing. Have you probably edited it yourself? No, I can't, I can't change oh. that, uh, or at least not that I'm aware of. Um, but the thing is, uh, this is a plugin, again, another plugin that I use that I can play a YouTube video, whatever kind of, kind of video that I want, that's not going to show the next video in the sequence. Ah, cool. What plugin is that? It's called Presto Player. Crystal? Presto. Press, Presto. 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 So if I, were, if I were to go down here, um, <laughs> where is it at? Presto Player. Play yeah. <laughs> Players. What are you saying about Kevin? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> Where'd it go? Should we that oh, definitely going to get some more. Uh, there it is. Chrome. So it's, it's right there. Press the player. Yeah. Yep, I see it. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so what's going to happen is that if I were to go to course online program creator, I'm going to look at the course through Elementor. And it takes a, it's going to take a moment to load. So this is Elementor. This is the, the drag and drop uh, website uh, uh, builder. And come on. So now you can see I, I can go in and start editing. So you see, I've got my little edit box there. So I can start doing stuff. So if I were to scroll down to press the player, and I want to, to edit this, this is, a, this is a text file, by the way. It's not an image file, it's a text file. I see if I were to go that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's it right there. That's all that that thing is. That this, image comes from your YouTube site. That's, that's, no, that's the link on Presto Player. And that's the code that the Presto Player has for my YouTube link. I oh, know, but I'm saying, does that image come from your yeah, YouTube? YouTube, yes. Yeah. This is probably where you can change the color. It may be up at the top, the middle one. It may be under ed, uh, under style and evidence. Yeah, that's what it would be. <laughs> um, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. I don't have to know. Because, because again, this this is uh, this is Presto Player, so I might have to go inside Presto Player settings. Right. Versus the text editor settings. The text editor is going. To, what is my font color? Like what? Is, sure. It's an image. It's so a captured image or something. Else. Does Does YouTube charge you to, to have a video on YouTube? No. So is that going to play right on your page, or does that take yep. you to YouTube? Um, so if I were to go back to the course itself, this is the course now, because you see it's Alpha Performance Academy, I'm going to put the in the URL. I clicked on that. I don't even know if the volume is on. on the nice, right? Uh, okay, cool. Wow. <laughs> is that on YouTube, then? That's a YouTube video now playing through my website. Okay. Uh, to glitch in the matrix. <laughs> 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 Let's see all those years of so that's that's so that's that's the image right there. Now the thing is that you know, as you're building your site, these are these uh, these enrolled in my course are all going to like checkout form. And guess what? I just that was probably not going to be easily easily checked. I've got Kiva in here, so I said any, anybody that buys you know, one of my programs, go to Kiva I work. I found link. I mean, that's the main reason. What well, is Kiva It's a uh, it's a um, Micro loans that you give to other people, like, like an, an increment of twenty five dollars. Do you get anything from them for work? work? Why do you use their site? Do they commission you for any of that? Yeah, my question too. Or you uh, just want a random link on your site? I just want, <laughs> want a random link on my site, but also this is uh, <laughs> uh, um, this is also my, my way of saying I, I give back. Okay. You know, cause I've been doing this. Stuff they help you. You help them. I've never asked a loan from them. But like I said, most of these are, the people that are asking for money, like, hey, and if they're entrepreneurs, or most of them are entrepreneurs, hey, I need to buy a new cow, and I'm, you know, they're in Zimbabwe, so then you have a second cow so they can provide more milk to their, uh, to the business that they're about to have in their community. Do they know who you are? By That's the not awesome, actually. Not. What is it called when, when businesses refer to each other? Not confederate marketing or whatever. Affiliate marketing. Affiliate, affiliate marketing. Yeah, yeah, my all the stuff I have up there, like the key consult, that's all affiliate marketing. My I got some flowers up there as well. Like site ground is affiliate marketing because you know you go through me, you I mean, I, obviously I get a commission on that, but you guys are also going to be getting a, a much better discount than you most likely would if you were to go do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you go through like key, I'm going to sit down with y'all. That's how you build a landing page. Yeah. So I'll I'll help you uh, through all of that. Now. Now, the next thing I was, so has this been helpful so far? Because we're getting a little low on time. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
I just have a random question for you. Well, it is related to what we've been going over. Sure. So our SEO guys purchase domains that are like dormant and has them linked directly to a different site that's ours. Okay. There's a redirect. Something. A redirect. How does that affect SEO? That should not affect SEO at, at all because the spider's going to crawl that 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 link, right. and it, then they'll go to the new site. Now that's the site that it's going to needs to be relevant to what you know, what relevant to what that URL is. It's somewhat relevant, but nobody's going to it. So is it really useless at this point? Probably pretty useless. Why did you acquire those domains? Well, there's domain investors out there. Huh? Yeah, I mean, basically we wanted some sort of SEO to boost us in the rankings of Google. So for instance, we have a construction company. We purchased a domain from an old real estate agent that doesn't use the site anymore, and we just have it linked to our construction company instead of going to whatever site they had before. So. Okay, so if those people used to go to that for this other company, mm -hmm. they'll, go to they'll go to ours instead now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so he bought out a domain that somebody just forgot about. There's a One of the things is that like, um, if you looked at my main emails, Kevin, I tried it, investmentsllc.com. Real estate was private investments I don't see that wasn't a website. That website does not exist anymore, but I still use the, so I still own it. But if you go to that website, it will redirect you to uh, KevinAdenlock.com. Right. You're talking about uh, domain name investing. There was one domain name I wanted to get up here. $1,500. $30,000. <laughs> yeah. $30, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or I mean, like, yeah. my, it's like my company is uh, OptimalPerformanceAcademy.org. The dot com was uh, was already purchased, um, but nobody's using it. It was kind of a dead site. Like you know, what? I'm just going with dot org. So I want to make sure that I, I like that name. You didn't try to buy it. Like, I don't know. I think it's asking like fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. It's usually ridiculous. Somebody purchased so it. So the dot org, the dot net. Yeah, I mean, they're. I remember they're, when they were buying when it first came out. People do all the time. They still do. They still do it. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's big money. I mean, like uh, I don't know if you guys heard heard of something known as NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm -hmm. Uh, with you know, it's basically uh, how you know how you think is it's, it's showing them how you behave, how you talk, and blah blah blah, and all that kind of stuff. Tony Robbins talks about it all the time. Uh, and when I was wanting to get my my NLP certification back in 2015, I, this one guy that I had never heard his name before. So I think mean, uh, not not Pat James, it was uh, Matt James. But because of his website, like instant credit with him, NLP.com. Right? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so just having that one URL. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, so the, the next well, thing I, what, my, I just wanted secondbrain.com. That was one that I wanted 30, 30 grand for. Yeah. They bought that probably so long ago. Wait for guys like you to reach yeah. out. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, one of my accountability partners, he does HR stuff, and he lives in uh, Houston, I believe. And uh, his website, and, and it's so obvious, in which you start understanding this, is uh, his website is HR Strategies. Now, I think yeah, your strategy is probably yeah. take it. <laughs> so you have to go with like dot, dot orgs, do different pronunciations, put dashes in them. The thing is, the, the more weird that you get with it, the less likely somebody's going to find you yeah. on a personal level. Not on, well, not on your, not on an SEO level. The SEO doesn't care about right. underscores and dashes and stuff. So the next thing you need to do, if you're just getting a new website, this applies to you, Frank, is that you may also want to go ahead and uh, uh, and have your website uh, be searchable by uh, or be found by Google. So let's go ahead and go into what's known as the uh, Google Search Console. Do you enter meta tags yourself, just out of curiosity? I do. So, the, so we're gonna go to the Google Search Console. Now, this is what it's gonna be. Uh, you want to log on and make sure you're in the right account. That's not that's my Trident account. That's not me. So I have to change accounts. What do you call it, Google? Uh, Google so Search Console. Just go to Google and type in Google Search Console. So I'm gonna make sure I switched over because I'm going for my Trident Investments one, and I'm gonna do the same thing. And if you're brand new, Frank, or um, <laughs> and you want to get yourself, yourself found, you, I would suggest learning how to do this, you know, do some Google uh, if, uh, searches on this, but it's, it's that you want to go ahead and, uh, and, and improve your performance. So under the Google Search Console, you're gonna to have to have what's known as your site map. Now, if you've got a, a, a 
WordPress website, and you've got Yoast SEO to find your site map, which is basically how your your website is um, <laughs> is designed. Don't you love it? It's a it's not a bug; it's a feature. <laughs> is go to your website and then forward slash and type in the word site s i t e map. So what are we doing? Is this Yoast? The, no, this is how you find your site map. So basically, you're giving Google like here's my, here's my here's my web. You know my website and all and how everything's interrelated with each other. Yeah. So this is how you start getting found on Google if you're brand new, just just getting started with uh, with your URL. So for you getting your SSL, for you if you go to your your website, one of the first things you will want to do once you've got your website basically created and it's ready to be searched is to go go ahead and go to Google Search Console as well as go to your your own site map on your website. Is that the default slash sitemap yes. because it's not going to come up for hours? Um, then you want to do sitemap uh, underscore index.html. Or excuse me, not xml. Index. Uh, so if my website only has one page, does it have a sitemap? No, yours will, will not. not fine. Or a sitemap dot what? Under, sitemap underscore index.xml. So no, no, Optimal Performance Academy forward, uh, dot org forward slash sitemap.xml. So like I'm doing the go medias, but nothing came up at all. Just saying, page four or four page came. Okay, Kevin, could you expand that so I can see it? Ah, you learn your lessons quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's mainly what you're seeing up here is what you're. I can't still. It's just his URL. I know. Slash sitemap underscore. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So that so you will get, get these, and then you want to go in and, and uh, you know what uh, and uh, and get your sitemaps and upload them to your Google console. That's how you're going to start getting found as you're just building your uh, brand new website. Now, get a little bit uh, technical here. But. So there is something in your in your web page or your website that has this this information. Yeah. Right? Again, I'm going off the this is what, you know being a, a WordPress type website, and right. this is part of the Yoast SEO. Um, um, a plugin. Now I don't know if now, he's not being fine as a plugin going to work for us. Yeah. Okay, so mine was made by Wix, and I don't know if it has that in there or not. It may or may not. But I don't Google know. Google find it. You can Google the the website. Um, I, I would say probably do a Google search on how to find um, um, your site map on a Wix website. Yeah. yeah. So this pushes it closer to the top. Yeah, well, it's basically saying, "Hey, spiders, look at me! Here, I, I'm new. Here's my here's my stuff." Instead of trying to build it organically, you at least you get it you get started. That's 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 that, that's the. Key. Can you find a site map of just any site, like yeah. some random website? Um, uh, should be able to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Like Asana, for example. How do you spell that? A S A N A. I've heard of that. It's just um, A S A N A. It's just a productive. Well, so you just type it in the search bar. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> What's this? I'm not exactly sure what all that stuff is. I mean, maybe it is a site map, it just has all of them listed out. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah they may have, just have a very extensive website. <laughs> they do. A lot, a lot of links and things in there. We well, just did site map to XML. Yeah. So, so you me, didn't click get started, though. You just typed it. Yeah, it's not me, you were out at dinner. But you have to go to that console first. Well, you, you, you so what you'll be doing is you, you'll get that URL, the, like the first URL, like it was on my on, on my site, and um, and then you can submit. I just don't understand why you went to that page and then you just went to the search. So that, if, I, if I were to get this, I, I, I may upload that <laughs> that first one there to the Google console. I always assume. Just I submit to Google console, and they'll get them like. Oh, so you're going to use the Google console, put that link in. Correct. That's so what is the ostensible uh, purpose of the site map? Basically, it's layout. It's basically your layout of your website. And who uses that? Uh, the, the crawlers, the, the spiders and crawlers. So I have seen on websites it says site map. Yeah, and you'll see like in the footer, it's like yeah. it'll be like your your short link that gets these uh, different uh, relevant pages. So you can have that as well. Every page you've created is going to be listed on the site map. Okay. So if somebody's like, I need to find his specific course, they can go to the site map and look at that specific course. 
Except if you wanted to. It doesn't show any interlinking information, though, just the, the pages. Just the pages. Yeah. Okay. Just not, pages not, the, not the post, but the pages. pages. Just the URLs of the pages. Okay. okay. That's what it says. That's it right there. Yeah, okay. exactly. Now, the last, one of the last things, because we're, we're kind of running out of time, is that, uh, the, uh, that I want to talk about is your media files. Now, um, I'm going to exit out of this. That's going to save. I'm going to save now. Now, if you're on WordPress, everything is, uh, all your uh, pictures and PDFs and downloadables and all that stuff is in this thing known as media. Okay. Now, if on a Wix website, you know, you've uploaded your pictures and things like that. The reason that I suggest using Smush is Smush will actually make your, your site, uh, it compresses your, your image. So that, therefore, your, your website would load faster. Mm -hmm. Now, this, again, is very important as far as your SEO is concerned. It's, your, it's, because it's going to, because one of the things I'm going to look at is your web performance. For an example, if I'm going to a, a website, I'm on my phone, and it takes 17 seconds to load, I'm probably gone at three. I mean, that's the way that's the way humans are, not even just Americans. That's the way humans are. Is that if you're if you got a load a load a slow loading page, then you you have to it, it's it's very important. Then there's also what's called what's above the fold. Like on a newspaper, you know, newspaper fold and a half. The most critical stories, the the best stories are on the top, but, and they also have the, the below the fold. Page so, two. Of or no, it's the same page one. Uh, so uh, but so for when somebody loads your page, that page that the above the fold has to load quickly. Okay, so one of the ways that, that that's important is are are your images. Now I upload a also a, a, a lot of different images uh, for my uh, for my website. So one of the things that you want to do is let's say for an example this course here that's being recorded right now I'm going to put in what's called the classroom. It's going to be you know, a two hour recording of this that's still recording looks like, and I'm going to load uh, I'm going to load that image. Now one of the things is I want a high compression level. So originally this thing was 180 kilobytes. It was right there. It was, it was, it was, the original file size is 180 kilobytes. Right now it is at 57. Mm. So it's one third, almost one fourth the original size. Wow. Same image quality for that image to load up. So therefore your, your speed of your website is going to load quicker by having a, a high, more highly compressed. And what was the tool you used to do that? This is, it's called Smush. Okay. The plugin is called Smush. Right. The one you referred to. Yeah. Correct. Now a paid version is called Kraken. It's like Poseidon, you know, you... Unleash the Kraken. You unleash the Kraken. <laughs> Afraid that will go down in infamy. <laughs> Depending um, on your politics. <laughs> if you have a WordPress website, one other thing that's going to help your SEO, again, I mean, I'm heavy into WordPress, yeah. as you can tell, yeah. is make sure that your alternative text as well as your description includes your keywords of importance for that image. So I'm talking about the classroom, our membership platform where there was pre-recorded things of our uh, life, classroom educational courses. And so. Wait, what is the benefit of having the text? The the text. the the only text as well as the description is that uh, now the image is going to be SEO. But wouldn't you have most of that text usually in the page itself? You would, but the thing is, by having the image, it just helps with it. It just helps with that uh, as well. Because now you've got two things that are uh, that are attractive. Does that text show on your page at all? It does not. If I took it, if I put it in the caption, it would. When you scroll over something and keep your mouse there. Or it just shows that if you go to the new site, it's got a little, you got the new site, you got the little thing that's underneath the picture. That's caption. Yeah. That's describing the picture. So the, what I normally do is I write the, atop, the alt, alternative text, copy it, and I paste it word for word down in the description. It's the exact same. You will notice that my company, Optimal Performing Academy, will appear in every single one of my images. So I'm trying to maximize the name Optimal Performance Academy. Okay, so if somebody searches the name of your academy, that image will show up. If they show, if they search all, there was the images and the text will show up. If they're just on images, the, uh, just that will show up. Now, I learned this in 2017. I used to have a podcast where I interviewed other entrepreneurs from across the world. Um, and, I, you know, and on my podcast, I actually, uh, on, on that webpage, I put, I put in all of the, um, you know, the, the, the descriptions like that. 
after like 40 podcasts, I can say I put in my name, her picture show, this picture, this, because, I, because those images were also related to my podcast. So it's it kind of, I decided to put in Sabrina's name in case it would show up like as a third image because they're all integrated with the podcast. Oh, even her. So, <laughs> so, that so therefore, really again, with, uh, with your SEO, now on a Wix website, I don't know if you can add alternative text in the description. I'm going to assume you can. So I would say if you can, and this is very time consuming because you have to go there and, and do this. But I would probably say come up with at least one phrase. It's going to be basically the same if you're doing it all in one mass sitting. And then you just type in a little bit, and control V. Mm -hmm. Type a little bit, right. control V uh, for each one. Now in WordPress, you will notice there is no save button. So once I made a change, I can close it out or I can go to the next one. Yeah, Word does that. I, I, I don't know. I, can you can you also do a save or do you just? There's there no save button. Okay. I, I can delete it. <laughs> I can delete it. You just have to publish it on WordPress, right? Or is it already? Yeah. And once once you type it in there and go to the next one, it's it, it's up there. This now, is notice, all draft. The draft of what he's trying to create. If he wanted this to show up on the website, like you were to change no. anything, it, it will automatically show up on the website as well. So it publishes it immediately once you're done typing it. After each keystroke is, is, is saved. So if you click that X, whatever you just typed in would show up on the website now. Not, not on the website. So if I would just put an uh, HF there, for example, and I close it out and I go back to uh, her on the computer, HF is right there. Right, but that's not on the website itself. Right? It's not on the website. This is not being used on the website. Now, what I have noticed that with my WordPress website is that I will go ahead and uh, I, I will create, let's say, the classroom, which will be the, the, the image, then shade it with the words on it. And I load both of these up to my, uh, to my page. Mm -hmm. The reason being is that if, I, if I'm on my website, if I, if I go to the classroom, as an example, this is probably not the best example, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Um, if I go to the classroom, you will see that that image of the Japanese room is here. Now this is text I put in on the page. This image in the background is that full colored image that's not shaded. And I knew that when I uploaded it because I knew this was only going to be in the background for this page. So, so what's the point of the other one with the text over it already? Where is it? The that? other one is because if I'm going down, Small link. If, if I'm going down here, that. Okay, so you're using the both of them. I'm using both of them. So, so the, and, uh, and so therefore, when you're doing your images, yeah, just just do that and, and then save them. Because I'm using both images, which now are now I've got two two images with more SEO on my on this one page. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you hover over the picture, does that text that you put in come up, or it's just nope. a good question? It would, it would go to my keep checkout form. So okay. the description, the alternate text is you, you can't see it ever. You can't you can see it ever. Okay, it's just for SEO purposes. If I put the caption on, it would appear here. The but caption will. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but, the, but the, the other stuff, I, I am not. Can you do that for videos, too, or just images? Um, just images, because the videos are being embedded. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so so with, with that being said, now you've got you know, your outbound links. Your, like this page, it's got outbound links, because it's going to check out forms. It's going to kiva.org as well. It's got, it's got inbound links, or it's got internal links, because it's going to, it's being linked to uh, my page. And it's got the SEO that's coming from the images as well. This is good. <laughs> Do you use Ahrefs or whatever it's A-H-R-E-F-S? Um, that's uh, it's a HTML coding, and I know what that is, um, but I, I do not because it's automatically being done. Um, for an example, this right here is online classes there, that's my inbound link. If I was going to be typing this in code, then I would put the, the, the lesson A space href equals, uh, which would go the quote mark, and then my, the URL, close on the quote mark, uh, greater than sign, put, type in online uh, class, and then turn and then turn it off. So that, well, that, is a, that is a hyperlink, which is exactly what this is here. So I don't so do the coding. I'm referring to like the website that checks for SEO and backlinks and how well your site Oh, works. that one. Um, yes. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know what it was you were just talking about. So. Okay, I was talking about each. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what that was, but. <laughs> well, this is. I'm gonna give you guys one more site, and it's kind of like what you're talking about. But okay. Href. Ahrefs is one uh, yeah. to check your backlinks. Yes. Uh, this is another site for you guys to look at. It's called Page Speed 
dot web uh, dot dev. H R E F S dot com. That'll see like how well you're performing with SEO, yeah. rankings, keywords, everything. Sometimes you have to pay for some of the content, but like, and, and there's another one that has like a little frog. You know, if you just had a little frog, you know, we're gonna hang. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If it's um, but <laughs> But what this does here, um, for an example, if because I'm still building my website, because it's only up for a few months, so I'm going to put in my website on this page C, uh, this paid page speed, and this is going to analyze my website on both both the mobile. I'm going to go and go to desktop first, so I'm going to analyze my 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 website on a desktop. Now desktop things uh, load faster because the processor is, is much easier, is much bigger. Sure, guys. <laughs> Group workout. That's all right. So, um, so let me uh, look at this. So right now, uh, my performance is the 94, my accessibility is 95, best practices is 92, and SEO is 92. So that's mm -hmm. my main web page. So on you're happy with this, aren't you? Well, I mean, because I, I, mean, I just went there and I resized all my pictures last week. I mean, I mean I've been constantly uh, doing updates. Does resizing pictures count as activity? It does not, but it does help with the SEO because it helps you with your, uh, with your performance. Okay. Because you, you, your page uh, looks quicker. But if I go to mobile, completely different. So my, my, my page right now is not loading, it's, it's not performing as best as it could uh, as on a mobile device. Does it assume any particular mobile device? Uh, it's just generic. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't matter. It's, it's sizing the website. It doesn't matter about what device it is. It's just size of the website. Because okay. if you if you even take your web browser on your computer and try to slim it down, it'll pull up the web version. Of it. Yeah. Or if you're on a uh, or the uh, mobile, version. mobile version. The mobile version of it. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Or if you're you know you're uh, you're uh, you're using your um, drag and drop thing, you can also change it to what it looks like on a desktop to a tablet to a cell phone. So right now, I know for me, I need to work on my performance on my, on my on, and remember, this is not my entire website, this is just my, my homepage. So what would you focus on for, to better your performance? Like what, uh, like I would be like, oh, it, I don't it know. It gives you suggestions on the side, yeah. actually. Yeah. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah, okay. scroll down, it'll show you a couple of suggestions. So right now, uh, time to read, uh, yeah. Oh. So there's a couple opportunities, even farther down, it'll be like properly sized images. Reduce unused CSS. So he has a bunch of unused code to style his website that he's just not using. So there's probably like colors for things that aren't even being shown. Well, the, and, and other things, I'd, I'd be turning something on and turning it off. And not, there's nothing <laughs> actually uh, being, like, so I'm, I'm boating and unboating it, but there's nothing being boated. Oh, it's cool. Amazing. Can I ask you a 50,000 foot question? Sure. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, what is the effectiveness from a marketing standpoint of SEO versus advertising on a big website like Facebook in your mind? So what's your question? So as a, as a startup? Because uh, organic search is, is always ideal. It's, it's by far the best. The but, pay is going to be safe. Okay. So I, I, I guess in my standpoint, if I use organic SEO stuff, to start building a, a customer base and I start getting income, would, do you think it's worthwhile once I once started to get enough income to use paid advertisements? Yeah, okay. No, the thing is once you start creating your own, your online presence, because there's another thing that you may want to look at as well, it's called uh, Google My Business or whatever it's called now. Yep, you're right, it's Google My Business, yeah. Uh, so if you've got a brick and mortar uh, business or business that you that you're only working locally, then I was just having a Google My Business uh, profile, uh, which basically just means, you know, hey, this is my address of my business, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I've got a Google My Business page, but I, I don't just work broad. I mean, I work the entire country, it's not the entire North America. Yeah. If you look me up on, on the uh, Fall Performance Academy on the uh, on business licensing, I don't have a business license in North Carolina. It's because I'm a Nevada company. Uh, okay. So I, I have a resident agent in Nevada, so therefore, uh, so it doesn't matter where I live. 
can you choose like if I live in North Carolina to have it based out of like Texas, for example? Yeah, it's gonna get a resonate. But like tax issues, <laughs> That's tax purposes. Tax, tax. That's a lot of the, the main reason people use other states is for taxes and anonymity. Mm. Makes sense. That's why. I'm so saying. you would use a lawyer or something as your agent there. It's it's quite a resident agent, and you probably expect to pay between one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars per year. Oh, it's still you, but you just don't have to list your name or what? No, the, 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 what they do is they are the ones that they are going to be. Uh, whenever you run a business, you have to have an address. Sure. Period. Right. And that address ha has to be an address that uh, that somebody is going to be there between nine to five on Monday through Friday. Period. Or if they're on vacation. <laughs> Still not because if you ever get served, you need a legal address for you to get served. So that's why I said, well, they're only open on Saturdays and Sundays, like 12, that service come. So it has to be something that's open. That's interesting. Is that's that why federal that's why, or those state law? That's state law. That's federal. federal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you see some people are, are at post office box. So federal. if if the law was looking for his company, they would go to the Nevada address. Yes. Yeah. Rather than where he lives now. And, then, and I registered with the registered agent, there, so they would they would accept the service or whatever legal things. Hopefully, this will come up. Yes, he's paying somebody to basically accept the service okay. notice. Okay. But also, okay. I, I'm not have to worry about paying North Carolina state taxes either. Okay. That's interesting. I never would have thought of that. All right. <laughs> so when I moved here from Las Vegas, I kept my uh, I, 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 I I stayed in Nevada. Not Nevada. I stayed in Nevada, but my my address is actually technically is in Reno. Are you an LLC? Yeah, Sigma Brown. Yeah. I'm oh, a chapter of S Corporation. You're an S Corp. Yeah. Cool. Now, I, I, know, uh, cool. I don't know what time they closed, probably, but I, I doubt anybody's got this room. So I want to give you guys some more websites. <laughs> um, if, I, if I'm not going to give you too much information, I'm going to give you one. Please. OK. So whenever you are creating a website, and you're going to put images on your website, those images, number one, you can, you should not be using any images that are copyrighted. And anything you find on Google is copyrighted. Anything? Can everything. you most everything change the search settings so it's content you can use? Well, what I basically there's a, there's two rules of thumb. Number one, use images that you take yourself. Or number two, obviously you can buy images and you know, go to uh, you know whatever you call it, Shutterstock or whatever. My my, my second book. Was no, I bought the image off the show stuff, or I go to royalty-free websites. Yeah, right. Now, the one that I use the most is this one here. It's called Unsplash. Okay. So if you go to Unsplash, the internet source for our visuals, powered by creators everywhere. Now, with Unsplash, I love because I created a, a lot of online courses. My roadmap for business success, which you guys can have for free, it's optimalformscanning.org forward slash RM, and you can just put in your email address and before you get the course for free. That is a slideshow. I got 195 slides in that show. It's 49 minutes long. Now, of course, I do use some images twice, or more than once, so I want to build an anchor to that image. But all those images you see in there, either I took myself or I got, I got off of Unsplash. What's the name of on the course again on the website? It's, it's called optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash RM for roadmap. Oh, okay, thanks. And um, that's, like I said, that's for, I, I suggest, that, that's my introduction to all of my courses, is that one right there. Right. Again, it's completely free. Other just put in your email. And uh, um, and so, uh, so with that being said, uh, most of those, um, mo most if not all of those images were that were downloaded on here. So, um, Sabrina, give me a topic. She's uh, good. Go ahead. That's what I was doing. Hispanic family. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. Oh, you like She's good. I'm sick of the cheesecake. Cheesecake. So, Hell yeah. Unsplash. Plus. <laughs> now, this is free. Now, Unsplash Plus, you're gonna have to pay for these. So, you see, this got watermarks on there. So let's say you're writing a blog and you're writing a blog on Facebook for whatever reason. Ooh, that's so now, one of the things I know, what I've, what I've learned is that you have to be very cautious of which kind of image that you're going to download. Okay. If you're going to be, because if you're doing things that are going to fit on a 16 by 9 formatted screen, 
downloading a vertical file is going to be hard. It's going to have to use cropping out the crap out of it. Mm -hmm. If you're doing uh, a square or, or a horizontal, uh, it's called landscape uh, picture, um, that would be ones that you, that you would use on your website. Now, if I was going to do this as a uh, post on Instagram, then I'll maybe you want the vertical version because that's how most people view Instagram. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's, it's difficult with colors because I just tried to do a vision board with Unsplash. Okay. And it looks crazy as hell because it's like, you know, you got this bright color here, this muted color here. It doesn't look good. Like, it's not, it's coordinate. Well, there are, I mean, you can you buy know? programs. Like, I, I, well. I use that one there, <laughs> uh, uh, Photo Director 365. That's my image uh, program that I use to enhance images. Photo Director 365. And it is like $97, I don't think it is. Or, but it comes with other things. Does it just work similar to Photoshop or something? Photoshop, yeah. Mm -hmm. Adobe Photoshop, but that's also a paper. You can use photop.com for free, basically Photoshop. You don't have to use What's Photoshop. What's the name of it? Photop, like the food. It's photopea.com. <laughs> it's basically free Photoshop. Okay. Oh. I, have to, I have to check that out. Um, because I've, I've, I've probably down, uh, over, for my nine courses that, that I've created so far, I've probably downloaded maybe a thousand pictures so, so far. Of this. So many times. I mean, Do you guys have uh, clip art? Clip art. Um, now, clip on uh, um, Unsplash, no. Now, there are two other um, websites that I've gone to as well. The mm -hmm. second one is called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. So Pexels is another uh, royalty-free site. You can also uh, uh, go to their video version as well. You also, I think it's pexels.com forward slash video, or videos, I forget this before I'm saying that. Now, with that one, let's say if you want a, a, a stock video, like maybe it's 10 seconds long, the complete silence. Like I said, you want to see like um, the sky, the, the moon go across the sky or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's where you can go eat to get those kinds of images. Oh, I know. <laughs> so I mean, like, hey, you ever heard of this? Uh, cause I've, the, the, I've worked on this once or twice. I was promoting a course a couple of years ago. And I just, you know, I, basically I've downloaded the photo and then I go and put it in the text. Did you know that 10% of, or one third of all businesses stay within the first two years? So I just had those statistics, then I threw in some royalty for your music. And there you go. <laughs> the violin's playing. I was going to say, was it depressing music? Um, <laughs> do they have audio? Like, can you find them with audio? No. There's all, no audio on them. No audio. Wow. That's all it is a feature. You can put your, well, except if you want to. Not that I'm aware. I mean, I've not done extensive search on them. Now the third one that, that I would talk about is one that's called Pix A Bay. You guys get a lot of free information. <laughs> There's so much out there. Uh, now Pix A Bay um, has the uh, you know, has those uh, images uh, as well. Now however with, with uh, Pix A Bay they actually just redesigned this website. You can do uh, illustrations, you can do vectors, you can do all, so you talk about clip art and things like that. Pix A Bay will be Probably where you would want to go. Okay. Probably free everything. <laughs> so now you don't have to worry about, hey, I, I just okay, created so this course. Yeah. In Vector is an image that you can scale without it losing quality. Oh. So if you try to scale a normal JPEG or something, it'll get really blurry. And yeah. like here, there, there's some, there's some vectors. It's usually a drawing, something oh, yeah. like that. That's a vector art. Oh, cool. It's usually an oh, illustration or something. So let me talk about cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> The theme of the day. And notice, I'm looking under vectors right now. Yeah. So you'll get more like cartoony pictures. What's well, a vector? This is a vector. This is, a vector. This is not a, an actual uh, yeah, they're not photographic image. They're gotcha, drawn. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. But you can scale them as big or small as you want. It's still painting quality. So what I normally do is when I download a picture, I would I'll usually put it just a little, because I'm in full screen mode right now. But normally I'll have like a little sidebar here where I can see my, my, my desktop. Is I will download the image and then after that I will go into this uh, this place called uh, maybe I've heard of it called Canva, <laughs> and I'll go under here. It says I created a design and I create, I usually that the 16 by 9 is my most common design that sits on the desktop, and then I, I can I can go in and create that image. So for an example. Like that's that's my background image for my website. On optimal performance, that's the front page. That's the, that's the image that, that, that I use there. But you will notice this is how, how it creates some of my um, text overlays on Canva, huh? Uh, yeah, everything. What, what does Canva do for you? It's like an image. Um, 
Manipulation. Manipulation, I guess you call it. Like, like for an example, like uh, I downloaded this guy off of uh, um, uh, off of uh, Unsplash, but this was probably a vertical picture. So I was like, I was, I think I was looking for the word hero, and I got this picture here. Uh, so I, I uploaded it to Canva. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, templates, like that's what I was doing. There's the picture. It's a vertical. You see, it's a vertical picture here. Yeah. I uploaded to Canva. I've made this one over here, uh, that white background, the orange background. Put in some text of Hero's Journey. What did you it. use to make the left button? Um, just a box. Just a box. I mean, yeah, but does Canva, what give you tools? Yeah, to yeah. it's called an element on the side there. You yeah. can create shapes and stuff. Okay. So, it lets you create like a basically from like PowerPoint slideshows, like, a slideshow for his example. Okay. You can make so let's say for example, I'm, I'm doing a brand new one. I'm going to put the Superman guy in there. You know, as, a, as an example. So there it is. It's my white canvas. So I've already uploaded the, the picture. You can upload the picture however you want. Uh, let's go find let's go find Superman. Let's go here. Let's say, you know what, I'm gonna put him on the left hand side. Do they ever charge you? No. Um this version of Canva, no, but you can if you if you do the elements yeah. and stuff like that, you will see like uh, at these here, they're gonna charge you a buck. Some things are locked behind the paid feature. Yeah. Gotcha. But most of it is free. So, uh, Frank, pick a yeah, color between white and black. What? Pick a color between white and black. Uh, green. Okay, so let's go to green. So let's go to green. Uh, which color green? Now you're starting to see why that so hex thing. Yeah, yeah, color. yeah. Make it a little lighter. There, that's good. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna put in a hero and say. And click out of it so I can actually move this over. <laughs> so you see the purple line? The, the, that means it's centered, uh, yeah. vertically centered. Okay, yeah. That's uh, a lot like. Uh, I can go there and instead I can highlight everything. I'm going to say I'm going to do 120 size font. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. Very simple. I, I, use, I use all these tools a lot. Me too. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. They are good tools. There you go. I get no full tools. Yeah, you know, and you can also uh, do it by the position. I've mostly just used templates because I'm lazy. So I mean that, so <laughs> that's it right there. I can, I, I can now and non-creative go in here and, and I can save it. So uh, that's how that's how easy it is. Mm -hmm. One of my coworkers uses Canva to create social media posts because you can design them specifically for social media. Yeah. Well, there's, there's so much that you can do. Um, one of my programs that I have is what I call the lead magnet generator. Um, so I'm gonna go back here. And uh, like uh, for all of my courses, as an example, I have a flyer for it. So, let's see what do that. Do you create your PDFs through Canva too? Yeah. So it's all, it's all my lead magnets that are PDF version. I can create on here, because I mean, here's, here's the design for this course. It's your business <laughs> card. So how would this, yeah. Kevin, how would this be better than just using PowerPoint? I like this. Um, I mean, you can use PowerPoint if you want. I just like the ability, just the, um, just the power of this. Let's say, for an example, this I'm going to go into uh, more advanced stuff. So let's say I want to go look at this one. It's called the Classes. This talks about this thing here. I, I can go in there, and actually, I can't do it at, at, at this moment in time. So let me go in and find another element. So let me close this one out. Um, Okay, so let's say this is for the big starter, uh, business Kickstarter series, of course. Obviously, that's Las Vegas. So I took the picture. After all, <laughs> so the business Kickstarter, I put a, I put this a box on top, and then uh, and then made the transparent a, a gray box on top, and then made the transparency at sixty percent to give it a shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what I can do is I can um, go ahead and save this as an example. This is the reason I love Canva. Instead of PowerPoint. So you don't really save Which is what? what? Which is what? Yeah. What specifically is what you want to do? Okay. So, uh, so right now I'm going to save this image as an example. It's going to come down here, and I saved it as a JPG. So I'm going to move it over to the left, and then I'm going to quit it. There it is. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and open up a new tab, and I'm going to start. I'm going to create a brand new design. Because now, instead of being an editable picture, now I've got it saved as one specific picture. So that's why I saved it. 
Now I'm going to get the picture that I just saved and I'm going to bring it back over. There's a little bit more you can do on Canva than you can in PowerPoint. And now I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit this edit the image. I'm going to get a little freaky here. By the way, can you do animations with Canva? No, not, not for the free version. Yeah, probably not. Because I've I um, spent a lot of time figuring out how to do it in PowerPoint. It's actually fairly powerful. So let's say I, you know, I get this image. However, I want to give it a, a little bit more of a, a cool design. I'm going to use this as a landing page on, on a Facebook app. So I'm going to do smart mockups. And let's say I like this image here. Oh, that's interesting. I know where this is going. Yeah. So now, even though this is squared, this is part of the wrong image, but I can resize this. That's pretty cool, actually. That is very cool. No, I don't like this because this I'm using a vertical image, so I'm going to hit Control Z. So, uh, so, I okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll click the image, hit edit, click on Edit Image up there, going over here to Smart Mockups. This is the one that I usually use. This is the guy that's like me uh, with his foot doing this and typing on the computer. So I'm going to use this. This is the one I, I, I use the most frequently. Oh my goodness. I, I didn't see it the first time around. Yeah, just as an example, you put that this image cool. on the screen. That is but remember, cool. I had to save it as an image first so I could upload it, as it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you have to download it first and then re-upload it. See, it seems kind of weird, but you're changing an editable image to an image that's locked. All right. Well, you've convinced me it's worth looking into. <laughs> and so After all I that time download. I spent learning PowerPoint. So he's being productive while he's teaching a class. Sure. <laughs> so it's saved as the undesigned two. So it's right there. I'm going to double click on it. Does yeah. it save it on Canva too, or just save it? Yes. It yeah, it automatically saves on Canva. Uh, if I'm doing something extensive like a PDF, you know, like a multi page PDF, I will go up here where it says file and uh, it will and with, uh, hit save, but usually it's always, it's always uh, going to have all. So it's kind of auto saves because I've been afraid to close the tab. And I yeah, and if you, click, <laughs> if you click the home, you can always just go back to the same project. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. So does it export it to different formats then? Yeah, a JPEG, P, a PDF. Okay. Um, so let's, for example, my I've got um, this one. So here's some beautiful for today. So I, that's the one we just did earlier. I just right. had it loaded up. Um, you can see how I use the classroom in different formats. Mm -hmm. That Course image, the, the laptops, are those royalty free? Yeah, it is all part of uh, free Canyon. Okay. So I'm gonna open up this one here. And uh, so these are all my flyers, like the flyers you see over there. I went to create the first one, I put the color for the image there, typed in my text, put, uh, downloaded a free QR code, and then gave the, the short code, which I'm going to talk about next week, and then you redirects for this online program creator is my website, my website, uh, forward slash OPC. Are you going to talk about the QR code stuff too? Uh, not today, because we're way no, beyond time. time um, but uh, so, so again, this is all being done here. Now what I can do here is normally if I'm adding another course, let's say I have to strike the of the classroom, if I want to get that similar design, I just hit here, copy, duplicate page. Okay. There it is, then I can start changing where it comes and I'll change that image. And normally what I do is I will save this as a um, uh, words, course image, course flyers. So these are all my course flyers, so I can print these at, uh, on the or if I want to print everything, I go to the course flyers up there. When you say print, you mean to a piece of paper? Or? Yeah, print those in there. Okay, gosh. Because all these are 8.5 by 11. Like you've got strategy session over there. So that's the, that's what the image looks like. All done on camera. If you wanted to uh, create a business card to go to uh, Staples for printing, do you know, are you familiar with that process, what formats and stuff? You just cut the card right there that was printed on Staples last week. <laughs> well, mine was too, but I had a, a company actually do it for me. Mm -hmm. I use Vistaprint, I mean, uh, if you do it on Canva, they're going to suggest Vistaprint as your suggested printer, which I would say if you're going to go to Vistaprint, use the link from Canva to go to Vistaprint rather than go through your own account because they'll give you better discounts. So that's what I've noticed. Affiliated. Was that? They're affiliated with them. Well, they're affiliated, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want to create your own, like, the layout of how it looks on Canva, you can, and then you can save it as PDF or JPEG and then bring it to Staples and they'll print it for you, or use the website to do it. 
And, but make sure that your page one uh, is your first image and your, page, and your back is the second image. Because yeah. what I normally do is I make my gloss in the front and flat on the back. Says what? No, you just. You can't write on them. Well, if that was white on the back, you could write on it. Oh. On the front, he's not, it's not going to be hard to write oh, on. I see. But if I if I just step in reverse, then my front of my card would have been flat, and on the back of the card would have been the glossy. So you want to make sure that you, uh, yeah, yeah, do that right. Now if you're going to go to Staples, I mean, those were done overnight, so that's the their highest quality is, is actually a a paper stock that's less than what I care to have, but because it, they, so I want a, at least a twelve point stock uh, paper, uh, and if they've got to go any higher stock than what they can do in the store. It's going to take an extra week wow. uh, for them to do that. But in, in, in those cases, I wanted those ASAP because I was going to a networking event that night. Yeah. Oh, okay. like, you saw my card with the ghetto one that I printed on the paper. <laughs> Crumpled up piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it with the ghetto one. I'm like, hey, I just gave it to those. You owned it. <laughs> I got a square to it. <laughs> now, do you all have to use use a napkin? <laughs> You all have any questions on anything? Now, there is one other thing I do, since I, I'm, I'm over time, but I haven't like, me up yet, um, is on... Uh, you know, on service note, I noticed it. Can you give us like a brief description of what the next class is, the redirects? Yes. Come or not? I'm just curious about what it's going to be about. Uh, sure. Um, now, I'm going to show this one last thing on, 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 um, on, on your pages. So, and then I'll talk about what we bought next week, and then about the week following. So, uh, uh, pick any page, it doesn't really matter. Crafting your story. Now, as you can see, I can edit this with Elementor. We saw very briefly how we can do that. Now, with, whenever you are, let's say you're duplicating a course, you also gonna have your block editor and classic editor. So remember, I said something about having the classic editor downloaded. Under the block editor, whenever you are creating a new page and or even a new uh, blog post, is that you want to go under this section as well. So under here, you will see that's, that's the name of your course or that's the name of your program. Now, scrolling down, this is where Yoast is giving you your ratings. So here is, a, see I've got two green lights. I've got an SEO green light and I've got a readability green light. If it was not a green light, then it's gonna be uh, yellow and it's gonna start saying like, that, like down here as to what additional things that I need to be doing. Now, as far as your SEO is concerned, since I'm on the SEO part here, is to make sure that uh, the SEO title, this is what, the, what appears here, is going to be what you want it to, what you want it to say. So you, I'm trying to make this as, as SEO specific as possible. This I'm selling a program called Crafting Your Transformation Story. Part of my title was Crafting, S, uh, yeah, crafting Your Transformational Story. Again, oops, see right there, I already got a mistake. Next. Obviously, I copied it from another page. <laughs> uh, what was your question? Just this? You wanted to see how it was rated? Yeah, you were about next week. I was just wondering what Redirect's course is going to be because today's course felt more like a WordPress introduction to me yeah. rather than SEO. So I'm trying to figure out Redirect's. And, and I didn't mean to go that route, but this, yeah. this is part of the SEO part is right here because whenever you're, again, it is WordPress, but it's also yep. SEO. Yeah, yeah. Can I hear people talking about, oh, my SEO doesn't work anymore because Google changed their SEO rules or whatever. Does that apply to us or is that a much higher level? That it depends what that person's what they mean by that by that statement. You've they, heard this though, uh, oh, Of course I have. I, mean, it was, but, but I, I don't, I'm no longer rank anymore on, 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 on Google. Well, have you done anything? Are you going back? No, I've been updated in three years. Uh, well. <laughs> well, how do you know yeah, you're not ranking? Can't, literally can't find it. Incognito, search your name, see if you pop up in the rankings. Yeah. Uh, see, I screwed up because uh, there's a lot of people with the same company. So, yeah, your uh, keywords specifically are really hard to rank in then. For, like, for instance, the cheesecake example, it'll be hard to rank in cheesecake because if somebody searches in cheesecake, there's a million other people trying to compete with that. So, common recipe so that's why the keywords oh, yeah. everywhere becomes important. Now you can start showing other long tail keywords and other stuff that you can use uh, uh, for your ranking. Now, when you're doing your meta description, this is where your keywords and keywords everywhere is also going to be uh, that you want to get ranked as well, uh, as in your meta, your SEO title and your meta description. Now, also when you when I scroll down here on the right hand side again, if you're using WordPress, there's the image I'm going to be using. Guess what? That image is also SEO searchable. Searchable. 
because of the. Uh, so you, you see the, the, the image description and all. Not captured. No, no oh, caption. No oh, caption. Oh, not captured. Yeah, all, all text and the, all yeah, text the and description. description. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So, so you're ranking up because of this. You're not going to start ranking because you SEO title. You're going to rank because of your uh, because of your meta, metadata. You're going to rank because of your content inside of your inside of your page or, or your post. So all of those are are, uh, are essential. Now, if I go in here to readability again, this is going to be more how how, how readable. Actually, I'm going back to SEO. The the next the, the the one of the other things you definitely want to make sure is is that you are. You have what's called a focus keyword. Now, this is a this is a word or hopefully a keyword for your uh, whatever that page or post is about that you're going to actually be saying over and over and over again. So, and, and how does doing that help? Because it, it's, it's showing the relevance to, uh, of that keyword to that to, uh, to that page or that post that you're that you're, uh, that you're okay. creating. So let's say you have cheesecake throughout your thing over and over and over, and that was the term up there. You'll probably rank higher when people search cheesecake. Now, if you are overusing it, uh, if you're using any Yoast SEO, they're going to say you're, it's overused. Like, hey, I, this blog is uh, 300 words long and 35 words are said cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're kind of rare at it. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely want to uh, make sure. That's just from a human readability standpoint. A spider is, uh, whenever you are doing SEO, the, the human readability is going to be important. It's going to be, uh, oh, yeah, have your retention. The will rank you on that too? No, okay. but it will, it will rank oh, you on Google. Actual on the retention. Yes. SEO is to bring people to your site. Yes. The readability is to keep them there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is why the Yoast SEO becomes, uh, becomes important. Yeah. If you, now if you will see like, hey, uh, uh, I'm passive voice. I, I'm doing that. Doing that one's great. Consecutive sentences. Now that's basically saying that you start the same word more than three times, three or more times uh, for three consecutive sentences. So like, if you start it with the same word, it, it will fly. Oh. If you say like the blah blah blah, the blah blah yeah. blah, the blah blah blah. Okay, that's good. So I mean, and the thing is, you, now if you're in Classic Editor and not Elementor, your blog will actually be right here. But because I'm using Elementor, you kind of kind of remember like okay, I gotta go, I gotta go find that, and then you go to the Elementor to find which sentences are are, are doing that. And the last thing is is also social, the social tab. Under the social tab, this is how your 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 again, uh, I got the wrong image. This is scraps of your transformation story. So I want to replace the image because um, this is for my. Uh, this is uh, the gods. This uh, so this is how, if I were to uh, you know write a post right now because I had that online program created because remember I copied the page and so I did not update everything like it was supposed to. Uh, if I were to go to Facebook and I type in crafting uh, your uh, your transformation story on Facebook, that other image would have showed up before. So again, this is you no know, whenever you're doing your 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 postings and such, you want to make sure that all your descriptions again. I, I did not update my. Control A, come on. Does this automatically post to Facebook or you? No, but if I was able to reference this URL on Facebook, it's pulling off my website here. So that's that, again. That's now your social ranking as far as your SEO is concerned. So if you put a link on your Facebook post, that image will show up in your post for people to see. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen that happen automatically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If it's it automatically, it's because you got a, he, they uh, five see. minutes ago yeah. he would have been in the wrong program which took up. Oh yeah, because sometimes I'm unhappy with the picture that comes up. It, 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 is, <laughs> it, it, it is because of that because your default image is the one that, that Facebook is, is pulling it from. Oh okay. I'm going to change this later, but I'm just doing this now. This is... so I just uh, control A, control C, and um, control A, control B. And then, I'll, of course, uh, Twitter is going to do the same thing. Place the image. Jason, when are you guys going to? We are in week four, but we are 
relocating right now. Our, the owner of the company purchased a building in Raleigh. So it's just like closer to here. How soon do you leave? Don't know the how soon, probably within the next two months. Okay. But feel free to call me or use the website to contact us if you need help with anything. Okay. So, so since this, that's what I have for SEO, and I do know this was I was going to work for us a lot because your, your SEO is going to be dependent on how you integrate or how, how you can access your images, resize your images. If, you, if you're on, like I said, on a Wix site and they don't have the ability to resize your images, then you may need to go into something like uh, uh, an app that is resizing, maybe that photo dot PA, photo P. Yeah. Uh, photo P may work, or paintbrush if you're on a, on a PC, uh, just to resize your images so that you can you make it smaller so they can load faster. Yeah, again, uh, on your images, get your alt text, get your description, uh, so that the so that those words are, are are tagged to that image, and make sure those are keyword specific. Uh, go on to keywords everywhere for that Get Home extension. Get those uh, those great keywords that's going to be used for you. Make sure you use them in all your blog posts uh, as well as your uh, your pages. And then also make sure again uh, internal links, external uh, outbound links for your pages. And then wherever you're hosting yourself, make sure you got inbound links coming to you. Okay. So one last question about SEO. Sure. I'm not an expert at this. I'm just. Sure oh, okay. Know. Well, and either way. Um, when it comes to SEO and ranking highest on Google, what is one of the best practices besides keywords and what you've gone over today? Is there anything specific that I should be doing that maybe I'm not? Because we're paying somebody to do SEO for a lot of our websites right now, and we don't know what he does. <laughs> and if it's just what we've gone over today, like we already know all that, but he's not doing it. So. Then, uh, if he's not doing it, I'm, I mean, uh, what is it called? Is it all like any results? We don't think so. Like we've looked into it, and there are not a lot of re results for a specific company that he's been doing it for. We don't use them for every company we work with, but we're trying to see if he actually is efficiently doing SEO correctly, mm -hmm. so we can continue to work with him, or choose somebody else to work with, yeah. or just help be doing it. Um, this is the uh, website. I think it was called Alexa, uh, where they would give you your your global uh, rankings, and um, I don't know if he's going to do that or not. So I mean. The website Araps will tell me the global rankings of everything and stuff like that, but he does like before I was saying like a redirecting from the old domains that aren't being used and backlinks from other websites he owns and stuff like that, but we don't know how much traffic those are getting, so we don't even know if that's really helping with the SEO or not. Um, and he's not changing anything on the website internally. Which I think is a big thing with SEO. Like, yeah, it is. Yourself. Yeah. And yeah, you're not doing that. If, you, if you're not doing anything on the website, then there's actually no internals uh, right. and no outbounds are, are being done. So you're depending solely on uh, inbound links. Hmm. And I don't know. I mean, that's like one third of the equation. Right. Okay. So that's something I got to just bring up to my boss and be like, hey, I knew something was funky about this guy. So yeah. that's why that was just a question of personal question. Or if he has any way to uh, give you reports. I mean, because another thing that you can do is what's called Google Analytics. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and if you don't have a Google Analytics account, I would suggest getting that, because that's going to start getting you how many, how many people are hitting your website, which browsers are they using, what, in the, uh, what, you know, what part of the country are they coming from. Is that free? Yeah. All this stuff is in, I think it's analytics.google.com. Mm -hmm. And once you once you have your social profile, your, your Google search uh, console up, go ahead and work on your analytics as well. And that way, you can start uh, looking at how many uh, how many uh, hits are you getting on your website. Which RS also says how many people are going to it too. But yeah, and then also like say if you've got a lot of blogs and other things, now how long? No, no. Um, which which parts of your website are they hitting? And also, how, what is their sticking? How long are they staying on that yeah. website? For example, let's say if uh, if Go Media was getting t uh, ten thousand uh, uh, hits per day, and the average amount of my time on the website was one point three seconds, like yeah, they're not. It's right. not that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Something's going wrong. Yeah. 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 Kevin, for a startup like me, if I would put out one blog post per week, do you think that would be worth doing? It's more. It's worth Rather doing than, than not doing anything. And secondly, as you're building your uh, uh, your blog post, uh, and, then, and then of course you'll be posting it. I'm assuming on Facebook, on LinkedIn, 
and, and then you're getting those uh, links from there. And I don't know how searchable LinkedIn and Facebook or social media posts are as far as ranking is concerned, but if, it's, if it does not rank you in SEO, it, it is ranking you as far as people seeing you, seeing you, you know, seeing your face. Okay. Like when I used to shoot all those videos on, on the houses using that camera right there. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I, I ran a from 2009 to 2018, basically for 10 years, um, for nine and a half, 10 years. My my face and me just selling lease option uh, real estate houses that I didn't even own in Las Vegas. So, and it's all about you know, just getting out there and just building your presence. Because you you you'll be seen as the authority, basically. One thing about putting up blog posts and videos is that even it seems to me is that even though you may not put them out like every day, but you do build up a body of content. You do. And one thing I would even suggest doing, um, I don't know if uh, Casey would agree with this or not, but I would say if, you, if you're feeling extra ganky, like, well, I want to go shoot some videos, uh, write five blogs, write five videos, just release them and uh, you can, you know, have them released uh, at a later time. Yeah, right. Exactly. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I used to do that, uh, you can do that on, on, uh, on YouTube, you can schedule your when your YouTube's are going to come uh, available. You can do that with WordPress. It's like when is this blog going to come available? Now, I can write a blog right now, and, so, and it will find it, it will actually go live on the twenty first of February. I can post it even right now. Everything's done. It's just scheduled. Not just it's scheduled to go. And what do you used to do that with? Well, most of the YouTube. Oh, you uh, can schedule on YouTube. You, for releasing a video or if you're writing a blog, I'll uh, say on WordPress, you can actually have it scheduled. All right, but to come out where? On, 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 on your website. On your website, okay. Yeah. So I was I was a little concerned. You were saying, well, you, you know, you post blogs uh, on uh, Facebook and stuff like that. So that's- well, you, You're announcing that the blog has been posted on okay. your Facebook. And you put a link to it. It'll link to the blog of your actual website. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah because I'm uh, And so you don't have a business account on Facebook to do that? No, no. you can just create a person? post as a person, if you wanted to. You can create a let's personal say, post like, hey guys, check out my newest blog post and then link it to their website blog post. Or like, say, let's say with my lead magnet for, uh, for sales, um, yeah, let me go to that AI written uh, blog, I can go down to the bottom and I can uh, using I can share, share it, to, it to Facebook there, yeah. yeah. He has that built into his website already. Yeah, that's so that, that's easier, another plugin. So okay. like you could share it on your Facebook from his website if you wanted to share his blog for whatever Correct. reason. Right? Or if you just go up here and say control C, so if I just put that at like on my personal Facebook page, that wouldn't necessarily get much viewing, right? Unless you have a lot of followers on Facebook. That, that's it. That's interesting in which you're selling. Yeah. yeah. If they see, if they're following you and they see your post and they're like, hey, actually, I want to see that, they'll click that. Okay. So I could build up a following over time. That's, that's the what point. you should do. Yeah. That's yeah. the plan. Okay. You're not going to have like a bunch of people just swarming into your no, website I know. because I, of SEO like that. this. Yeah. Yeah. This this is this is a, a, a time in progress. Oh, so yeah. it's not this is not an overnight it takes a long time. Yeah. Um, thing. Uh, even like I said when I was doing my uh, the lease option real estate, I mean I was very very active. I mean I'd be putting new houses on my list all the time, and I send an email every week of, of the new houses that I set. If I if I put a house under contract, I put it on my website that it was under contract. I highlight it in pink how that it was under contract. If it's sold, I, I, I put it in red, and it was sold. I've been up to my website for like three weeks. So I was showing activity on my website for number one, for the viewers who are following me, and number two, for the spiders that are crawling it because they're seeing activity on my website. <laughs> so, there, so it was, it was, uh, it was a, you know, a, a double win for me. Did you just work exclusively for like a few people? What's that? You just, when you were doing that, the lease option stuff, did you just work exclusively for like a few people? Anybody that was, uh, that had bad credit, that was looking to buy a house. So that, that's why oh. that's why I, I did so many YouTube videos with all the links going to my website because it, 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 it put me onto the first pages of Google. So if somebody was in Las Vegas, like, hey, I want to do a lease option, a lease option in Las Vegas, they would find me. Somehow I feel like there might be a lot of people in Las Vegas with bad credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this no, is like a great place for that. Yeah. Yeah. Were they no, your houses? Whose houses were you selling like that? Investors. That's what I was asking. Like, do you just look for like a few? Like, no, uh, I, I mean, I always found new investors, and I said, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Is, uh, I'm normally going to charge you two hundred dollars for this, but I'm going to give this to you for free, at equitable interest, you know, interest in the property. And uh, and I'll say uh, I'll shoot video of your house. Uh, and I'll put it on my website. I'll do my marketing campaigns. So, you know, I did a lot of advertising on Craigslist. Did you I have a hard time getting those investor clients? Not, not always. I mean, toward the end, probably, because a lot of investors decided to do things differently. 
But um, I mean, I started shooting video in 09. What was going on in our head at that point? Oh my God. Housing, housing crunch. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I'm trying to have people buy a house that is actually where home buyers are going down. But most of my clients, my tenant buyer clients, were I said probably 50, 60% of them were uh, ex homeowners. They lost homes to foreclosure. They didn't want to become a renter again. They wanted to get into a home where they could actually eventually buy. My second most common uh, people were people that were in the, uh, in the uh, cash industry. Ballets, strippers, uh, uh, bartenders. I mean, I mean, we're in a service industry town. People that don't claim all the money that they're making on their on their tax returns. So those are my two most common clients. So you kept them off the MLS. I was even a, a realtor back then. Yeah. Before I was a realtor. Because that's when we became a realtor, that, that then I had to do uh, uh, you know, where I had to sign a realtor form by not putting on the MLS, or I put on the MLS that this is the lease option only. So now you know what a realtor is. I don't know how to deal with those. Yeah, that's why I put on this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get testimonials from people? Uh, I did. Yeah, so, I mean, I put them did on you, my Did you offer them incentive to do it? I didn't really follow too much with uh, getting testimonials. I do now. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm creating and Google My Business pages is, is really relevant. It's like when you start selling things, then after, you know, part of your email campaigns and email things you can be sending out, like, hey, once they bought this course, let's say you guys downloaded a roadmap, for an example, I may have you get an email a week later, like, how did you enjoy that uh, roadmap? If you really enjoyed it, if you really want to give us a four or five star, go to this link here. Because mm. I'd like testimonials for my websites, but I don't know how to get people to write for me. Yeah, ask them. Just ask them. You don't yeah, that's yeah. Usually, usually Now, if, hey, being, you a realtor, I, uh, being a realtor, I would suggest having them actually go through your Zillow account. I'm not a realtor. Oh, okay. If you were a realtor, <laughs> send an email or a text even. Like, it doesn't have to be like super formal, but be like, hey, just if you enjoyed what we do for you or helped you out, feel free to give us a nice review. Mm. Yeah. And you'll repurpose those to ask. Well, because well, even if I do an email blast, I just don't hear back anything from anybody. So if you're going to you ask send a lot. I'm like, never going to hear back Well, or, or give them an incentive. I mean, <sighs> and if I go to my online classes, best to ask in person once you deal with whatever it is you're doing, right? So like, so I'm gonna just pick this one right here, just how to, because I, mean, I, I repurpose my uh, a lot of my uh, testimonials all the time. So right here, um, now uh, uh, on all my pages I have a testimony. Shows credibility. Yeah. Now yes, this is all part of like many pages, and we'll talk about that in another course. But when Diane uh, first wrote this thing, it wasn't about my one my program. It was about my book, my second book. <laughs> That's where the book came from. And if you think like I've ever book a person about that, but the person would grow. Now do you see that? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, yeah. Cool. How did the book do? Or how did it do? Um, actually, I've written four books. Uh, my uh, my first book, which is kind of weird, is called Lease Options Made Easy. So, uh, 2015. Um, and oddly enough, that book sells really big in the UK. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter nine is all about VA loans, FHA loans. <laughs> You guys don't have it in the UK. But, anyway. um, but my second book was uh, Designing Your Own Destiny. Uh, it's, a, it's a book on personal growth and development. Thank you all for waiting. My third book is on mindset, how the winner's code. And the fourth book is how to launch a business. It's launch a and create a successful business. So those are my four books. But every two years I write a book. But now I'm not writing more books, so I'm doing courses. Is this your full time job? Yeah, this is, no, well, this isn't, but uh, I have doing yeah. this. So does your book sell very well? Um, it's hit or miss. I mean, because I mean, I, I always carry books along with me, so you know, I, I always tell you, you know, at live events. So, but um, you know, every month, you know, I get a check from Amazon. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I put, I self-publish on Amazon. 